learn the lesson of uh, not taking everybody serious earlier a couple of weeks back in Limestone. So the Bears are poised and ready to uh, run their winning streak and go to 10-0, and but they got to play the game first this afternoon. We'll come back and step aside and talk about this game between Pembroke and LR and give you some scores in and around the South Atlantic Conference, around the country. Uh, today, games are already underway, and we'll get you set. Today, Lenore Ryan and, and the Pembroke Braves going at it here from Moret Stadium. It's a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky, but it is chilly. Early winter like weather today, probably temperatures in the upper 40s, early 50s, and we're expecting a really good crowd after last week's record of 10,000 fans on hand to see the Bears beat Wingate nationally televised game as well. Welcome right back. Stay with us. This is Bears Game Day being brought to you by Mike Johnson, Hickory Toyota. Before you buy, give Mike a try. That's 1-800-NEW-TOYOTA. This is LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Quality work that's on time and within budget. Sound too good to be true? Well, it is true with David E. Looper and Company, a general contracting company that has a diverse range of building experience, including medical office complexes, retail shopping centers, educational facilities, as well as design build projects. They take pride in the quality of their work that's completed on time and within budget. For your future building needs, contact David E. Looper and Company, licensed in multiple states, fully insured and bonded. David E. Looper and Company, a proud sponsor of the LR Bears. Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery is a proud supporter of the Lenore Ryan Bears Den. Live music, brain-busting trivia, and our drink specials keep the Bears coming back. Join us Saturdays and ask for a brewery tour. That's Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery is walking distance from Lenore Ryan's campus at the intersection of Highland Avenue and Lenore Ryan Boulevard in our newly renovated Holler Mill location. Honor the craft with a toast to our Bears at Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery. And go Bears! For over 50 years, Cranford Furniture at 1700 East Main Street in Valdez has been serving the residents of Valdez and surrounding areas. Whether you're looking for bedroom furniture or living room furniture, Cranford Furniture has you covered. They're friendly, they're honest, and they're local. Small, medium, large recliners, beds, dressers, and if they don't have it, they can order it for you. Give the crew at Cranford Furniture a try. Located between exits 112 and 113 off I-40 on Highway 70, east of Valdez. Cranford Furniture, serving the area for 50 years with the finest in furniture. At People's Bank, we believe what makes you different makes you exceptional. Maybe you're a great listener or teach kids to read. Perhaps you rescue dogs or own your own bakery. What's unique about you is what we cherish most. With a name like People's Bank, you know we care about people. And we're here to help you achieve exceptional goals. People's Bank. Be exceptional. Member FDIC. We went looking for the biggest hits. We started in late 60s. Dug through the 70s and 80s. Wrapped up in the 90s. The new 96.5. The best mix on the dial. 1490 WSVM Valdez. 96.5 W243DV FM Valdez. Your hometown station. Back here at Barrett Stadium, Juju Phillips, Jack Huss, Mike McCree, and you. Thank you for listening this afternoon to Bears football. Down the line today is Lenore Ryan plays week 10 of the season as they host UNC Pembroke. And on this Veterans Day weekend, special thank you going out to all military and first responders. Thank you for your service down through the years. Um, as the Bears celebrate partly today, military and the veterans coming up this weekend. Don't forget Veterans Day on Monday. Well, for the Bears of Lenore Ryan, they come into this game, as said, with a senior day, 18 seniors. They've won 12 straight here at Moret Stadium. Their ninth South Atlantic Conference championship, Jack, and it's so impressive that for the first 35 years in this act, the Bears won three. They won six in the last nine years. 
Last week, that win over Winget sets up the final two weeks, as you mentioned today. But a Winget ball club that's three and six, and they're coming off a game playing at Newberry, where they took Newberry all the way to overtime. So, as you said, they are a team that scores a lot of points, but defensively, they're very porous. Well, this team is uh, this team is capable of beating the Bears, and I think the Bears know that. I know the coaching staff does. One of the things you have to remember is Coach Chronix, as he uh, came on the scene, has been. Very very good at preparing his team on a week-to-week basis because, as you all know, the only thing we all have in common is time, and how we use that time is what's most important. I don't think the Bears celebrated very much past Saturday night last week before Coach Connick let him know that, you know, this game becomes the biggest game of the year. You know, we don't win this game, then we're really in a, putting ourselves in a little bit more of a difficult situation because Pembroke, even though it's not a conference game, it won't affect the conference championship. It does affect the regional seedings, and the regional seedings mean home games. You know, we're in position now to get at least two, the first two at home. If we wind up second, if we wind up first, we get a bye and then a home game and a home game and as long as we go. So it would be very, very important for Pembroke in the building of their program because they have a lot of young players still on this team, but they do have veterans now. They've got some seniors, juniors that have been around with this coach, and and this team is very capable. So I expect the Bears to come out and play well because that's what they have done in the years past, and they they know what happened when they weren't ready to play at Limestone. Well, Pembroke comes in, as we said, three and six. They are a program that's only been around for the last 12 years, and their head coach right now is a former defensive coordinator. He's been here all 12 years. Shane Richardson is his name, and he was an assistant for the first six years and took over after that as the head coach, 25-36 overall. But one thing to keep in mind about Pembroke, they've lost three straight on the road, including winless on the road this year. And going back over the last few years, they have uh, lost... I think 15 in the games in a row on the road, four straight road games so far this year. So a a team on the road, they've struggled. And for the Bears, well, they come in in the first quarter of play this year. They are just so good at uh, really running up the score and doing quite well, outscoring their opponents 136 to 30 in the first quarter alone. So those early possessions for Lenore Ryan, we've seen it a couple of times this year, will be very key for LR. As the Bears come out on the field, they're in their all cardinal or the Bear Blood Red, if you call it, with the black helmets this year and 100 years of Lenore Ryan football. Pembroke coming out in black and yellow and white. We'll tell you more about them. We'll set the stage. We'll give you the starting lineups and more. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this. This is Bear Football powered by Carolina West Wireless. It's Nick at Paramount Automotive, and we're proud to sponsor Lenore Ryan football. Go Bears! Come see us on Highway 70. We've got a huge inventory of new Volkswagens, Volvos, Porsches, Hyundais, and Kias. Plus, did you know we sell tires, and we'll be any competitor's price on tires every day. If you're thinking about selling your car, we'll buy your car, truck, or SUV, even if you don't buy a car from us. So during those timeouts, check our inventory at ParamountAuto.com and score a touchdown at Paramount Automotive. Boy, that was a hard hit. When the Bears get banged up, they go to Richard Williams, official team chiropractor for the LR Bears, and he's the best choice for your family, too. Whether it's dealing with sports injuries, headaches, body pain, jaw disorders, carpal tunnel, and much more, Dr. Williams will individualize a program to meet your specific needs. So if anybody in your family needs chiropractic care, choose the best. Choose the man the LR Bears trust, Dr. Richard Williams in Hickory. More at richardwilliamschiropractic.com. Hey, fellas, listen up. We're going to run a 10-9 slant on two. Ready? Man, it's hot out here. I sure could use a tier one. This isn't the time for that, Baker. That perfect fizz with just the right cherry kick. Mm-mm. Come on, we got to focus here. He's right. Nobody does cherry like cheer wine. I like mine with tiny ice. Love tiny ice. Cheer wine goes great with barbecue, too. Listen, we win and I'll buy you guys all the cheer wine you can drink. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. let's do this. Ready? Right. Try the uniquely refreshing cherry flavor of the South. Cheer wine and diet cheer wine. Uniquely Southern. Does your financial advisor take the time to really listen to you? Is your financial strategy personalized for you and your family? Will your financial advisor be there as your life and financial situation change? When you work with Mike Bell, your local Edward Jones financial advisor, he focuses on what's important to you. You'll work together and use an established process to create a personalized financial strategy 
backed by the advice, tools, and resources to help you reach your goals. And you'll partner to help your strategy stay on track. Contact Mike today at 828-328-8111. That's 828-328-8111. Edward Jones, member SIPC. It's Nick at Paramount Automotive, and we're excited to partner up with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and sponsor Lenore Ryan Athletics. Come see us at Paramount Automotive for all your car buying needs. And remember, we sell tires, lots of tires. Go Bears! Back here, Juju Phillips, Jack Huss, Mike McCree, Lenore Ryan Football, being powered by Carolina West Wireless and brought to you by some fine sponsors, as you've heard. Ortho Carolina, Mike Johnson, Hickory Toyota, my People's Bank, Southside Power and Fitness, and Custom Design Group among our fine sponsors in 2019 on the Lenore Ryan Network. So the Bears lost the toss, but they're going to get the ball, so Pembroke will kick it off again in uh, white with black pants and black helmets. They're set to go off today, and they're going to kick it to the open end here at Barrett Stadium. The Bears, as we said, are out in their bear blood red uniforms, all colors in Cardinal with the black helmets. They'll receive. Mitchell is back there for LR along with Dorit Young, and we're about set to go here as UNC Pembroke, the final meeting between these two teams for a number of years. Braswell approaches it, high kick, short kick, fielded by the Bears at the 16, running with the right, has some space at the 30-35, stiff arm, and is knocked down that time, but not before a good run up to the 34 goes Landon Scott, and the Bears should get good field position to start out with Grayson Willingham. The Bear Junior quarterback completing 59% of his passes and over 1,300 yards and 17 touchdowns. We'll get the nod at quarterback Amin Stevens back in the lineup at fullback. Up front today will be Clifton along with Feeney and Jordan Brooks, Jason Poe, and Ian Brinson. We'll set the rest of the starters for you. The Bears come out of the shotgun with Willingham standing on the right hash. He'll send Mitchell in motion. He'll take the handoff and keep it. Grayson Willingham takes it right up the middle between the two hash marks. And he'll get it over the 40, about the 43. Didn't expect that play on first down. Right. No, no I did. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, Coach, Coach Chronic will give you something to look at the first play. We had a double stack on the other side and ran Jaquay Mitchell in motion. You just knew he was going to get the football, and, and of course he didn't. <laughs> So this time, Stevens will get the give, we'll get it up to the 45. That's good for the first custom design group first down for the Bears as LR will move the change up to the 45. As we said, Stevens back in the lineup at fullback, averaging over five yards a carry. And wide receiver this afternoon will be Demarius Hampton and Dariq Young, which Quay Mitchell add running back for the Bears, along with uh, several others as they rotate some players in and out. We'll tell you more. Checking in right now is Cal Dickey as a freshman. Out of Roswell, Georgia, he comes in motion here near side. Back to pass, Willingham looking deep downfield. He'll go deep, and it is nearly cut, oh, that, and a flag well, There you go, flying. it should have been. Yeah, wow. it was thrown behind the receiver, but the flag came. He could not try to hit the handle, and that was 82. DeAndre Lester, and he'll draw the flag in a 15-yard penalty. Great call by the official. The, the, the defensive back never never attempted to cover. He just ran with him face-to-face -face and, and had his arms up all over him. And uh, pretty simple call and a real good job by the officials back there catching that. But, you know, the Bears always show you, again, right off the bat, Coach is showing them some things they have not seen. He's giving them some little looks here and some little looks there, some different things, and that's what he's going to do because that's what's been successful in the past for us, Juju. And we, we missed the boat a little bit. You know, last week we got started pretty good, but against Limestone, you know, we got off such a bad start with them scoring first, and that's yeah. unusual. Will Neal checks in at tight end, double tight end stack this time. Josh Ramser in over on the left side. Again, they come out. Everybody kind of bunched in. Man goes in motion. This is running with the balls, Carter. Carter. Ryan Carter gets it over the 45 or 35 yard line. That should be about a five yard pickup on first down. So the Bears, who've outscored their opponents 136 to 30 here in the first quarter, are moving in on their first possession. Just underway. No score here between LR and Pembroke between the bricks at Moret Stadium. And, and uh, Coach Bob Bodine, the uh, offense coordinator and offensive line coach, has done a masterful job this year, Juju, as you know. Uh, uh, piecing together offensive lines every week. It's been a different offensive line starting every week. They'll send everybody in motion. Just a little dump-off pass to Stevens out of the backfield. 
He'll haul it in and get the first down as he tiptoes down the sidelines. Down to the 25 and another custom design group first down. Nice little pitch and catch. I mean Stevens, the big fullback out of the backfield. It's a lot of little flare. It's almost like a wide screen. And, that, and with Amin Stevens' ability to catch the football as well as run with the ball, that's added another dimension to the Bears' offense. Trey Luttrell is the slot receiver in now. He's another freshman. Willingham will give it up. Play action pass. He'll throw it. It is caught inside Starks. the 10, down to the 5. Starks. That yes, is Starks. Drake Starks down to the 3. And another Number custom design group first down. Good ball fake inside by Willingham. And he found Starks on a little back shoulder throw to the veteran tight end for the Bears, who holds in his eighth reception of the season. Hey, Mac McDonald, I know you're listening out there, buddy. 835 to the 5 man right there. That's what it was. 835 to the 5 man. Bears have it first in goal at the three. Willingham sets the offense under center, sends a man in motion. They'll give it to him. This is Young left side. He'll go untouched into the end zone. Derek Young gets another touchdown for the Bears as he gets into the land of milk and honey is fourth. Touchdown of the season. The Bears made it look easy on this first possession. Jet, jet sweep down on the goal line. We've used that play quite a bit this year to score. And, uh, you know, I, I, that may be the one play we could have used down at Limestone. You know, we got it down there and knocked it and didn't get it in there. But uh, Coach Coach Chronic again gave him some different looks. There were four different plays I saw then that I haven't seen all year. So a new, new, new offense uh, shakeup. Extra point is good. 66 yards and seven plays. And the Bears are on the board. So team that scores early and scores a lot have done it again here this afternoon. We've only played about two and a half minutes of the Bears lead it here. It's LR7 and Pembroke nothing. Step aside, back with more. This is LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Center Street Eats, conveniently located in view. Oh, this? I was playing catch a little too hard with a dog. He's got quite an arm. I've been through this before. It'll be better in a couple of days. Probably. Visit one of Ortho Carolina's specialists right away by logging on to orthocarolina.com. Leave the waiting to this guy. Come on, honey. Ortho Carolina. You improved. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. Carolina, orthocarolina.com, you improved. Back here, Choo Choo Phillips, Jack Huss, Mike McCree, our cast of thousands. As Lenore Ryan gets on the board in the first possession, leading here seven nothing, we're waiting to kick off now. As Elbaugh approaches it, there's a high pooch kick again, a little short. And the receiver takes it at his 20, running and is hit pretty hard and immediately goes down, hit and stopped by the Bears. And so Pembroke will get the first possession for them and a big hit that time by Amari and Brown. Amari and Brown, yeah. yeah, indeed. Hey, on the scoreboard, Blowing Rock Brewery scores. Virginia Wise, Catawba tied at seven. Jack Carson. 14-14 update. Okay, and Carson Newman leading Virginia. Uh, no, check that limestone, 21-0. So here comes Pembroke. The Braves, under a veteran quarterback, will tell you more. They come out three and six on the season. Again, they've lost four straight road games. They're led by Josh Jones, sophomore quarterback out of Wilmington, Hoggard High School. He is in the shotgun. They spread the field. They roll right. Jones rolling right, looking for someone. He's going to keep it, and it's tackled down behind the line of scrimmage, and a flag comes down. Oh, no, 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 May no. be a horse collar oh, against Clayton man. Horn. I don't think he did either. I tell you, uh, the referee had a good look at it. He called it, but, boy, it didn't look like him up here. looked like he got him around the shoulder pads. So Clayton Horn, our fanfare player of the game in the conference, South Atlantic Conference defensive player of the week last week uh, against Wingate. Uh, had the tackle, but it looks like it's going to be a penalty against the Bears. Man, horse collar tackle, that's what he called. Sure did. So Pembroke comes in, their quarterback Jones, who ran at that time, is 
a guy that's been under a lot of duress this year. He's been sacked five times, at least five times, on three occasions. So their pass protection, not very good. He's nonetheless thrown for over 1,700 yards, 61%. Jack, most importantly, uh, he was recruited heavily by Coach Chronic in LR and uh, decided to go to Pembroke. And when he did, the Bears went ahead and signed um, – Gunnar Anderson out of Alexander Central High School. So Jones on the radar for Lenore Ryan. He went to Pembroke and is leading this team right now on offense. They give a handoff and a running play over the 45 up to the 46. So after the penalty, Pembroke getting it near midfield to pick up a gain of three, second and seven. The inside front for the Bears this afternoon. Uh, Tavis Robinson will get the nod and end. Dan Luba, Mari Houston, Jaquan Artis at Inside for the Bears front four, then Horn and Sherrod Williams at linebacker. It'll be Milliken, Rosser, Jackson, along with Malik Taylor and Landon Scott in the secondary. Back to pass. Jones dumps it off here to the running back, trying to make a move and run towards the first down. Going to be close, tackled by Luba, and that was Josh Sheridan on the catch. He'll get it over the 50 and into LR territory, and as you heard, uh, first down for the Braves. You know, the, the, the teams have learned now that if there's anything, any kind of motion for beating in the Bears, get rid of the ball quickly. You notice then he looked downfield in this suppression. He had a dump valve out there. He had a little back out there in the flat he could dump the ball to. They're going to get rid of the ball quickly. They're going to roll the quarterback. They're not going to sit in the pocket and try to take three, four seconds to throw the football. Four wide, one tight end look. Now that one wide man comes in and comes in at running back, and he'll take the handoff, running straight up the middle, gets pretty decent yardage. This Sheridan, Josh Just Sheridan, their leading here. rusher with over 560 yards, averaging nearly five yards a pop. That time picked up five, so down to the 41 of LR, so good pickup, second and five now for the Braves. Bears lead here, seven nothing. We played about five minutes here at the Red Stadium. Beautiful day today. Temperatures in the 50s, we're in the shade. Good crowd on hand, it's not gonna be the record 10,000 we saw last week, but nonetheless, a pretty good crowd here for Lenore Ryan and Pembroke. Second down, and four. Jones out of the gun. They'll bunch the formation. Receivers to both sides. They send a man in motion. Jones will hand it that way. Near side here. Boy, Tackle. Right. Nice. Good play that time. Tackle by number two is uh, Price. But the Bears had him snuffed out. Robinson. Travis, Travis that, that was a heck of a play because he had the blocker right with him. And he just, he just reached around the blocker while still in contact with him and grabbed the ball carrier. That was a heck of a play. And, you know, the Bears... The Bears have done a really fine job for the most part all season in stopping the run and making teams one-dimensional. Now, we get through the heck out of the ball last week and did it pretty good, but if you can make people throw and you know that's what they got to do, it's certainly going to help your defense. Bears only giving up about 70 yards on the ground. Here's a late throw down here. It is caught over the back shoulder and a first down. Just a pitch and catch that time from Jones to his wide receiver that is Sean Brown big six foot three freshman out of Waxhaw at Marvin Ridge High School outside of Charlotte and that'll get the Braves down to inside the 20. Heck of a throw and uh, I mean he just laid that ball out there he felt the pressure again and he had a sole so uh, receiver over here they had three wide on the opposite side he just knew the guy was on the boundary threw it to his back shoulder over there as you stated and and Great pitch and catch. Defensive back was in good position, but he, he never saw the football. So Jones, the quarterback, this time will give the handoff and trying to fight his way, and he does. He finds a seam inside the 10, inside the 5, running with the football, and founding a hole is D'Angelo Blair Young, redshirt freshman out of Charlotte, South Mech, and he gets the Braves a first down, first and goal now to four. Yeah, and the key to this drive is running the football. The Bears have not been able to, you know, to, to generate a pass rush because they've run the ball successfully. On first down, they've had two or three five-yard games, and that, that really set up good plays on second down. And one third down conversion. So first and goal at the four, open den at Moretz. Jones takes the shotgun snap, running left with it. No running room. Bears stack him up. Young inside in the whole front line for the Bears and his friends. Maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and goal. 
big play right now for both teams. Second down, if they can hold them to a position here and, and force them into probably trying to throw the football on four, on third down, then, you know, we got a chance at an interception, got a chance uh, to hold them to a field goal. That'd be great on this drive. This is a big boost to the Pembroke team right here to take this ball down the field like they have. Bears only giving up 15 points a game this season. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. Back to pass, Jones, he looks left, fires it in the end zone. Cops touchdown. bobbled. Did touchdown. he catch it? Yes, yes touchdown. And a touchdown for the Braves with 7.56 to go. They're within one now, 7-6 in favor of the Bears. Boy, I tell you what, just as, just as good as the Bears looked on offense right there, they did not look very good on defense. They, they ran the ball successfully. They threw the ball. They had, a, they had receivers open. On the third down, back shoulder catch over here is about the only time the guy wasn't really wide open when he threw the ball to him. Completes a nine play, 72-yard drive. So Braswell now on to try to tie it. Takes the snap and the kick. Doesn't look pretty, but it goes through 7-7. 7 7.56 to go in the first. Bears and Braves all tied. We'll step aside, come back with more. This is LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Carolina West Wireless is a Bears fan. And NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement. 7-7 here between the bricks at Barrett Stadium on the campus of Lenore Ryan. A couple of scores on the updates for you. Glenville State leading uh, six-ranked Notre Dame. 10-0. That game at halftime. That would be a huge upset. That is at Notre Dame College. Ferris State ranked second in the nation. They're trailing at Grand, uh, Grand Valley State, 9-7. And a couple of other updates. Carson Newman in the sack. Oh, leading Limestone, 24-7. Catawba and Virginia Wise tied at 14. Right now, we're awaiting both teams. We had a TV timeout here this afternoon. And, and you know, Jack, I was looking at the regional rankings. You mentioned LR is ranked first. But when you look at the regional rankings, the Bears barely above uh, Valdosta State with strength of schedule. The reason the Bears beat number four, number six, and number seven in the region, while Valdosta is only beaten and coming up, they got to play West Florida and West Georgia in the next two weeks. So uh, the Bears have had a stronger strength of schedule and have played one more game than Valdosta. Yeah, that, I think that's why they bumped it. I think that win last week was big because, you know, they knew Virginia Union and, and they knew Carson Newman, but they knew Wingate from last year in the playoffs how good they were. And this year starting out 8-0. So there was no doubt that, that that game last night is what propelled us up to the top. So Braswell on to kick it away. Now as a left-footed kicker will approach the football. Tied at seven here, midway through the first. And here comes the kick, balls away. One of those high kicks again, and picked up by Bell at the 20. He'll run right. Spins over the 30 and down to the 34 where he's drugged down. So the Bears again, starting over their 30. Warren Bell, you know, Warren Bell, Jack, uh, he was a quarterback at Scotland County. His counterpart, they played in a playoff game, Scotland County against Wilmington Hoggard. And that was Jones, the quarterback. They played, I believe it was a semifinal game a couple of years ago. It was like 37 to 36. Bell led the way. He rushed for 300 yards and had six touchdowns. That could be that could be this game. <laughs> this game could wind up 37-36. Neither, neither defense has shown anything on the first series about the ability to stop anybody. All right, so the Bears line it up and hand it up the middle to the fullback. And he is tackled way after the whistle blew. And that's Bell again. Warren Bell, the redshirt freshman out of Scotland County. 
he ought to get a pretty good spot though. He had almost, uh, well, three yards, good yeah. three yards. That was the old midline option. He ran right up the center's rear end and the quarterback rode him up in there. And then the Bears, again, they give you so many formations, so many different plays to look at. Strong side left, ball's on the right hash. They're going to run the option left. They pitch it to Mitchell. He's over the 35, 40, 45, gets the first down to Quay Mitchell. Ball is on the ground, perhaps a fumble. Let's see, the official says it's a, a Pembroke's football, I think. Yeah, he's yeah, still going that way. So Mitchell coughed it up down in front of uh, Pembroke's bench near the 50-yard line. He had the first down, picked up about 10. Jaquay Mitchell had that great game last week. And the first turnover of the afternoon, one of those UFOs, those unforeseen occurrences, has Pembroke now in business at the 48 of LR. And, and one thing you just, every coach in America will tell you the same thing. When you're the favorite in a game and a heavy favorite like the Bears are in this one, you don't want to give this team like we did Limestone Life. They drove it down the field. They, they showed offensively they can score. We knew that coming in. They've scored a lot of points this year. But we don't want to give them life with any turnovers. The Bear defense needs to stand up right here. Averaging 27 a game while the Bears only giving up 15. Out of the gun, they run the football and with the hole to the 40 down to the 35. Running with the ball with the a big hole is 24. D'Angelo Young picks up about 14 into MR territory at the 34. And a first down for the Braves with seven minutes to go in the first. Tied at seven. First turnover of the afternoon. And Pembroke trying to take advantage here. Yeah, they have, they've shown a penchant to run the same style of offense, the same plays that we've seen, but their execution up to this point and their blocking of the offensive line has just been super so far. Jones rolls left, back to pass, under pressure, spins, throws it out of bounds, incomplete. So throw it into the stands. He was out of the pocket, so nobody opened that time, and Jones, the quarterback veteran, again, out of Willington, just threw it away. Sacked five times in their game against Newberry. And they went to overtime last week against Newberry Jack, and uh, they came back from a big deficit. Yeah, They were down 28-10 well, to 10 before they tied it and went to overtime. You can see that. This young man throwing the football is as good as anybody we've seen. We've seen some good quarterbacks this year, but just watching him right now, the throws he's made already, he's made some excellent throws, and he's got the ability to get away from you too. Here's a run to Sheridan. Straight up the middle, get it down to the 40. Now check that 30, pick up a four. Third down and six. Bear defense trying to hold here after the turnover. They have up front, Luba's checked in, Houston, Artis, Robinson, Horn and Williams, Jabbar Smith in for Rosser, Milliken, Scott, Malik Taylor and Eric Jackson. They spread out the Bear defense. They'll send five out, empty set. Quarterback standing in the gun in his own 35, waiting the snap. He'll take it, looks left, throws it, caught, first down inside the 25, down to the 23. Just a simple catch beyond the sticks and a first down for the Braves. They've learned very quickly how to do this. Just They have seen the video. They know what happens. They've got five receivers. They run that number 84, and he's just a freshman. I tell you, he's a good-looking wide receiver. He just went down the field about eight yards, stopped, turned around, the ball was there. The quarterback knows he doesn't have time to hold the ball against our pass rush. They're doing exactly what they should do. They're a well, well-coached football team with their offense today against the Bears. Here's a pass over here, screen to the receiver to 84, and he lost the football. Nope, it's going to be he said he was down. Nice tackle by the Bears in the open field. Sean Brown, he dropped the football after he hit the ground here, but it should be a pass completion, maybe a one-yard pickup. Second down and 10. He's holding the young man, Sean Brown's holding his arm as he walks off. He looked hurt just as he got hit, but hope it's not bad, because I tell you what, that young man, uh, he's had a heck of a game to start with. He's been uh, the thorn in the proverbial back of the Bears so far, but the Bears really, really, really need to hold them to a field goal attempt right here. No because this is, uh, you know, we don't want this game to start out with a with a fumble and, a, and, and all of a sudden Pembroke's in, in, in a seven-point lead. Milliken with the big hit that time up into the receiver. Senior, one of 18 today. Senior day, back to pass, second and 10. A little dump off pass to the back, out of the backfield, makes a move inside the 15, close to the first down, get it to the 13, it's going to bring up third and about one. 
Nice tackle on the play by the Bears. Joseph checking in an inside linebacker for Sherrod Williams. Again, a great job of coaching by the Pembroke coaching staff. Coach Richardson and the offensive staff, had, they, they know what they want to do, and boy, are they doing it well. The back came out of the backfield, and the ball was there quickly. They didn't wait around and look downfield. That play was designed to be a dump off to the back out of the backfield real quick, and he picked up nine yards. Jones now has send the receiver to the right. They bunch the formation here near side. He'll take the shotgun snap, trying to run with the running back. No room. Bears stack him up. Horn on the stop. Clayton Horn. Jackson came up to make the stop, and Tevin Robinson, Tevis Robinson. So it's going to be a loss of two. That'll bring up a fourth down now. Let's see. Field goal. So the Bear defense rises up. They've been staunch all year, stingy against running the football third and short, and they come up in good play again by Horn, who had a great game last week, and Eric Jackson also. Bear Defensive Player of the Week. So those two guys are the leaders on the defense along with that front line. And now it's going to force a punt. They're going to set it at the 22. It'll be a 32-yard kick. Timeout. Timeout Pembroke, I believe. Or delay a game. It's delay good, a game. good call, Mike. I wonder, you know, they did take a little bit of time deciding what to do, but you know that for a good field goal kicker this is not any you know five more yards no. from here is not a big difference so i don't think that matters that much other than it might you know that he might be wondering why they would why they did that he's seven to seven this year didn't look good on that extra point he's 19 to 25 this year here's a high kick down long middle, enough perfect. and down the middle good 10 7 pembroke takes advantage of the bear turnover with 316 to go in the first it's pembroke 10 and LR7. Back with more. Stay with us. This is LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. At People's Bank. Now, Kia in Hickory. We want to see you driving a new Kia or, hey, a quality pre-owned Kia. We've got a huge selection of new and pre-owned Kias. you got to get to Paramount Kia in Hickory. Highway 70, ParamountKia.com. I knew that there was an opportunity to have my college paid for if I was good enough to play baseball at that level. That was going to make a big difference in my family. D2 baseball gave me an opportunity to play at a high level and to get an education that's going to be valuable for me throughout the rest of my life. I chose to take my experience of being a student athlete and pursue that within my career and to get a master's degree. If I wouldn't have had a baseball scholarship, there'd be no chance that I'm doing what I'm doing today for an appointment. Multiple locations mean there's an Ortho Carolina Urgent Care Center near you. Don't wait for relief. Feel better now. Ortho Carolina. You improved. So Pembroke capitalizes on the turnover by LR and here comes the kickoff. Bell takes it across the 35 up to about the 38, so LR should get really good field position after the kick. As Pembroke, would they go the seven plays, 49 yards, and get the field goal to lead here 10 7. So here comes the Bear offense. Last time out, had a turnover after a, a first down run by Mitchell. See what they can do now, trailing for the first time this afternoon for only, I think, the second or third time all year, the Bears are behind. Yeah, the Bears have not trailed very much, but uh, they've had two great possessions offensively, but the fumble uh, really uh, stifled that last drive. The first drive took it right down the field for a touchdown. Bears line up trips left and running up the middle, Stevens. And they're making a definite statement trying to stop the Bear fullback. I mean, Stevens, who came in averaging I mean, over Stevens five yards of carry there. and 10 touchdowns and he has been stopped no gain on that play second and 10 with 255 to go in the first Pembroke leading the Bears here 10-7 and again the Bears will show you some formations that was a really stacked formation but you know you could kind of tell they might do something simple and they did somebody jump offside nope they didn't they moved but they jumped they didn't back make contact yes indeed so Cal Dickey is at right wing now for the Bears a freshman, he goes in motion. Play action. Willingham back to pass. Lofts it downfield deep. Caught. Nice catch by the Bears. That is Ryan Carter. Ryan Carter with a nice diving catch. Had to go over his back shoulder. Goes down to the 31. And LR gets a first down. Brought to you by Custom Design Group. 
quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Ball's on the left hash. Sends Carter in motion. He'll get the jet sweep handoff. Running left. Good yardage. Steps through a couple of tacklers. And he'll get it close to the first down, close to the 22. Carter has been kind of hot and cold, it seemed like. And maybe it's just because he hasn't touched the ball quite as much as some of the others, including Jaquay Mitchell. But, you know, uh, he every time he gets the ball in his hand, it seems like good things happen for the Bears. Ringgold, Georgia sophomore. He and Drake Starks were tight ends. Or were teammates. The Bear tight end. Here's Willingham rolling out right, looking downfield, throwing. Caught! Touchdown! Waiting on the official. No, nope, touchdown. Not. Yeah, they finally got it. Boy, it took a long time. Sure did. But a nice back shoulder throw. Willingham connects with Mitchell. Is that Jaquay Mitchell or Hampton? I think it's I thought it was Hampton. It is. It's Hampton. Touchdown Bears. Willingham connects on his 18th touchdown pass of the season. Covers 62 yards in just four plays. And the Bears go back out on top. That might be Carter. Was it Carter? I think it was 13. Eight. Okay, it's 13. Yep, it's 13. And got both feet yep. in or got one foot in. Yep. Ten yards. Uh, here's the extra point. And a great throw. Yep, a great Wonderful throw. Willingham played two really good throws because he put the ball in a position. Sometimes where you throw the ball is as important as, as how soon you throw it or whatever. You've got to position the ball so your guy has a chance. Both that back shoulder throw to set that up and then this throw right here. Both of them, the ball was placed in a position where his guy had a chance to catch it. The other guy didn't. So it was either going to be incomplete or it was going to be a touchdown. 14-10 in favor of the Bears. We'll step aside. This is LR Football powered by Carolina West Wireless. It's Nick and Paramount Automotive, and we're excited to to a college degree would have been completely different had I not run Division II cross country for the University of Mount Olive. Having an athletic and academic scholarship was key for my success. Our coaches were really helpful. Furniture. After the LR touchdown, here's the kick. Pembroke fields it at about the 30. No running room. He'll be knocked out of bounds at the 31. So the Bears answer after the turnover. And Pembroke gets a field goal. LR goes right down the field in four plays. Grayson Willingham with a nice touchdown pass to Hampton. And the Bears back out on top here, 14 to 10. We got some updates on the scoreboard for us this afternoon. Anything new? 17-10, Glenville. Over unbeaten in sixth ranked Notre Dame College. Glenville's coached by former LR head coach Mike Keller, who has a in his first year at Glenville State, his alma mater actually, and they have a winning record coming into this game, I believe, at five and four. Well, Notre Dame is nine and zero. Oh. Here's a pass, screen pass over the middle, and the Bears snuff it out really well that time. I don't know if Jones was intending it for their big tight end, but the Bears had him right at the line of scrimmage. It's, an, it's a complete pass, but only a one-yard pickup. That was a great example of a, of a great idea that just didn't work. <laughs> you know, that really, that was a heck of a good play. They were going to, they faked a wide receiver screen, let the, let the defensive front rush us, and then dumped it over ahead to, to the tight end like a screen, but, you know, our linebackers had no part of it. Freshman, sophomore tight end, Fahim Diab with the reception. Here's a quick toss over here, complete, run out of bounds. They have really, really, really done a heck of a job preparing for this game, the coaching staff. They're just running quick throws, everything they're going. The quarterback is getting rid of the ball. I mean, our, our defensive, I watch the pass rush. We haven't been able to get within a step of him because he's getting rid of the football. They're designed, that was just a quick out to the tight end. Everything's been quick, 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 and the one uh, back shoulder throw was the only long throw we've seen. Everything else was short, you know, 10 yards or less, but get rid of the football. Third and six. Shotgun, four receivers out. Bears show blitz. They come up the middle with pressure. Running right with Jones. He's got some room. 40, 
first down, slides into LR territory at the 48. Showed his footwork that time. Jones who come in with over 250 yards rushing and four touchdowns to scramble for the first down. And the Braves get, no, gonna mark it back at the 50. So it's still a first down right at midfield, but a nice run by the quarterback. Had pressure that time, but got a little bit of pressure, but boy, he stepped up in the pocket. The linebackers were gone, and man, he just took off and made a great play. This young man's having a heck of a game. Josh Jones played his high school ball in Wilmington, Hoggard High School. He's out of the gun. Here's a flea flicker. Wide open. And Wide they're open. throw down the field, and it is caught inside the 15, down to the 11. You guys, I wrote this little thing here, if you can see it. The flea flicker is to football what an old car is to the nation's highways. You know, you see it every once in a while, now and then, but it's hard to believe that it still really works. Well, and I it worked that time. It worked beautifully. I, I just happened, when I saw him pitch, I looked at our safety, and Eric Jackson had just come up so quick. So at the end of the first quarter, sees Pembroke with a nice long flea flicker pass, and they have it when we come back inside the Bear 20. Your score, Lenore Line 14, Pembroke 10. Stay with us. This is Bears football powered by Carolina West Wireless. Quality work that's on time and within budget. Sound too good? solutions for your joint pain to patient-centered heart care, they're here for you every step of the way. As part of Duke LifePoint Healthcare, they have renowned expertise on their side. That means they can lead you to even better health. At Fry Regional, they're not just experts in health care, they're experts in your health care. To learn more, visit MyFryRegional.com. Fry Regional is a proud sponsor of the Lenore Rhine Bears. Back here, we start the second quarter with Pembroke driving against the Bear defense. LR leads it here, 14-10, but the Braves certainly have given the Bears fit so far in the first 15 minutes and now have it at the 14. And Jack, as you look at the stats brought to you by Custom Design Group, uh, they have put up some impressive numbers in the first 15 minutes. Yeah, you don't fight. The Bears' first quarter has always been our best quarter. And boy, they, they had 145 total yards. We had 127. Their quarterback was 10 out of 11. Here's a running play, getting good yards inside the 10. Going with the ball is Sheridan. And he'll get it down to about the 7. So they should pick up about, what, six or seven on this going to be almost, down. Yeah, almost seven. eight. It is eight yards. Almost, yeah, seven seven good yards, almost eight. But I tell you, the Bears have just not, they just haven't looked sharp. As good as we've looked on offense, we haven't looked like we're sharp on defense today. We, we're not, we got uh, got really bit by a couple. We, we give up some passing yardage, but, boy, we're giving up a lot of run yardage. They had they had uh, 54 rushing yards. We only had 43 in that quarter, and that's unusual for the Bears to get out rushed. Handed up the middle to Sheridan, inside the five, and he'll take it down to the four. Should be close to a first down, if not a first down. Willingham was four of four for 84 yards, and Jones was 10 of 11 for 91 yards. They move it back, they'll spot it at the five. Third and one now. Crowd trying to get into it here. A lot of uh, visitor, the uh, home fans normally sitting on the side here of Moret Stadium, but the sunny side is on the visitor's side, and that's pretty full as well. Crying for a quarterback keep right here. Let's see if they'll do it. I, I really, really like the quarterback keep in this situation. He can run the football. He hands it to Sheridan, spins, not going to make it. 
I don't know. He dove forward. His knee touched down right at the five. Yeah, and they're going like to mark it. You're going to mark it out just short of, uh, just beyond the five, but it's short of the first down. But he fell forward. I thought we had him stopped in the backfield, but he kind of spun around. Going to be close. Even, he, yeah, he may even mark it and go. Where's Lanny when we need him? I know. Lanny, I believe, is attending another college football game with uh, the boyfriend of his one of his daughters, or the right. or the husband of his married daughter. I'm not so sure. I got a good friend who's on the board of trustees at Pembroke. I won't call his name, but I played golf with him on Monday. He said he was coming to the game, and then he got a call from a guy. He had tickets to the Ohio State Maryland game. And they were going up to see Ohio State, Maryland. It's 52 to nothing in the third quarter. I hope he's having a great time up there at that game. <laughs> Side the first down, it's going to be fourth and inches. We're talking about the size of our hands. About that, that's it for Pembroke to get the first down. They got to get inside the four, and it's right at the four, and it's no more than probably maybe eight inches. So they're going to go for it here. They got a good veteran offensive line. All those guys over 300 pounds. This is a quarterback keep. Now, I'm going to get it right in a minute. I know they're going to run that quarterback keep off that belly play. thing about it, last time they had short yardage, they ran a slow developing play and, and, and they didn't have a chance. It was just so slow, the bear defense was all over it. This has got to be a quick hitter, but I'm looking for, I'm looking for the quarterback sneak right here. Quarterback takes the snap. You called it right. He takes the run and get it in the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. Jones takes it in. He went right. Nobody hit him, so he spun back to the left and took it into the end zone, and the Braves score again. And I'll tell you what, did you you see them? They are fired up. They're running around, dancing, slapping. They're all over the place. This has really inspired them. They've had great three possessions of offensive football. 69-yard drive and eight plays, and they go back ahead, 16-14, awaiting the extra point. Braswell. Freshman place kicker. Snap is down, and the kick not very good again, but it is good. So the Braves go ahead by three with 13.07. We just started the second quarter. The Bears usually give up 15 points a game. They've given up 17 already, and we play barely a quarter here this afternoon. We'll step aside. Bears trail 17-14. Back with more. This is LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. It's Nick at Paramount Automotive. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Trust. Dr. Richard Williams in Hickory. More at richardwilliamschiropractic.com. Ow! Back here. Juju Phillips, Jack Huss. Mike McCree. Bears get the return after the touchdown. They get it up close to the 40. As we wait for the players to unpile, and LR will have it at at about the 39, actually. Nice, nice return by LR. And so the Bears trailing for the second time today already. Now 17-14 will send their offense out there. Averaging over 43 points a game. See if they can get something going here. Ball's on the left hash. Short side of the field. They spread everybody out. Willingham this time goes to the gun. He'll send a man in motion. He'll keep it. And run with the ball, 35-45, and up close to midfield. Good enough for a first down. The junior quarterback, Grayson Willingham, takes it for an 11-yard pickup, and that's a custom design group first down. The Bears showing that wrinkle, Jack, with Willingham running the ball already today. Yeah, but, you know, most people have played the Bears for non-quarterback runs, but Grayson is a capable runner. He's not a blazer, but he's going to pick up yardage, and he did right there. Probably as healthy as he's been in in his LR career. He's had some knee problems, 
and some others. Ankle injury back to pass the time. Under pressure to go down. Uh, he tried to step up in the pocket, and there was no room. The big defensive lineman stepped all over Willingham after he sacked him. But that's a big sack by Dominique Davis, a redshirt senior out of Laurenburg. You talked about some of their players. They have a lot of red shirts as well. We talked about Wingett last week. But I tell you that Pembroke, who came in, their defense gives up over 35 points a game. They got good pass rush that last play. Well, and, and Grayson held the ball too long. You can't, you cannot hold the ball. He, nobody was open. You got to get rid of the football because that was just a sack waiting to happen when you hold it that long. Loss of six, second and 16. Here's a jet sweep to Mitchell, and he finds a hole. He's running to the right, looking for a block. Nearly dropped the football. He gets the first down at about the 33. I think he tried to move it. He was running left and cut back to the right. He tried to move it to his right hand and bobbled it for a second. Held on to it, picked up the first down to the 32 of Pembroke. Jaquay Mitchell, we talked about this before, Juju. He has a great ability to put his foot in the ground, plant, and go back against the grain. He's done that all year, and that time he went way back against the grain. He went all the way back to the other side of the line of scrimmage and made a big play for it, and the Bears needed it. Leading rusher on the Bears, first player over 500 yards. This is Carter running with the ball, gets a face mask out of the 25. That's going to take it down inside the 20. Ryan Carter picks up 10 on the run. Tack on another penalty against Pembroke for a face mask. And the Bears are back in business with 11-17 to go in the second. LR trails 17-14. Half the distance to the goal from the 20, what, 23. Where is he standing? He's standing at the 23. So it's about the 12, inside the 12-yard line now for the Bears. And, again, the Bear offense has just looked like they were just, you know, right where they needed to be. Uh, I was concerned, you know, after last week, you know, we, we big played Wingate. We didn't have any substantial drives. It was big play, big play, big play. But, boy, this week we've come down and we've hit passes. We've hit runs. We've done everything we needed to do. Defensively, we got we got a ways to go to catch up in this ball game on defense. But, you know, the Bear offense may have to outscore them. We've been in games like this before, you know, where we had to score more than they did. That's just the way it is sometimes. It's been a few years. You're right. Uh, coming into this game, Wingate, or check that, uh, Pembroke's defense giving up over 430 yards a game, including about 250 on the ground. Speaking of on the ground, there is a Pembroke player down, injured right now. Uh, he's being helped up. We'll keep it right here. Bears trail this game 17-14. Big defensive lineman uh, and Donde Aloma out of Myers Park in Charlotte being helped off the field. Some scoring updates for you along the Blowing Rock Brewery scoreboard. Catawba, Virginia Wise still tied. 21-14 Wise. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wise on top of that one over Catawba. Bears play Catawba next week. The other update, Carson Newman, Limestone. 24-17. In favor of Carson Newman. Mars Hill leading Tusculum. 7-3. And that game involving nationally ranked Notre Dame College. Against 17-17. Okay. Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, Ferris State lead, leads, leads, leads uh, Grand Valley 14-9. Florida Tech leads North Greenville 14 nothing. Thank you. And Virginia Union, Virginia State. Don't have one on that yet. I'm still hunting for it. That game started at 2 o'clock, same time as we did. That's for basically the CIAA championship and the maybe sixth or seventh seed in the regional playoffs. Back to action. First down, Bears at the 12. Willingham. We'll step under center this time. He'll take the snap in a second from Clifton. Handoff, running left. This is Young inside the 10. Derek Young was out of the run the ball, to the and nine. The That'll eight. be a pickup of three. Second down and seven for the Bears. Rolling clock as LR trying to get it. They have Cal Dickey in now running back. A freshman out of Roswell, Georgia, with the injuries to some of the running backs for LR, including Jace Jordan, who's out today with another ankle injury. If we get some of these guys back, too, because last week it was basically Jaquay Mitchell yeah. uh, was the only player available at that position. And then uh, Cal Dickey came in and uh, started getting a few reps in there, too. So the Bears will wing T looks and Dickey in motion. He'll take the handoff, running right, has some space, five and into the end zone. Freshman Cal Dickey gets his first Lenore Ryan touchdown as he takes it in to the land of milk and honey. And the Bears go back out on top. It's LR 20 and Pembroke 17. You know, the thing about that play, Juju, we had such a great view of it. 
Cal Dickey took the handoff, and nobody, if it had been two hand tag or one hand tag, he still scores. Nobody got a hand on him all the way. What a great job of blocking by the right side of the line. The wide receivers, the uh, tight ends on it, everybody, everybody was just cleaned out, and Cal Dickey made them pay. Here's the extra point, 71 yards. Bears take it down the field. Click it off in six plays. You go back ahead, your score, Lenore 21 and Pembroke 17. This is LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Rolling Rock Draft House and Brewery is a proud supporter of the Lenore Ryan Bears Den. Live music, brain busting trivia, and our drinks. Everett Chevrolet Buick GMC is ready for another exciting football season. Everett has been a proud sponsor of the Lenore Ryan Bears for 25 years, and we wish the Bears a safe and successful season. And August means it's all systems go for another winning season with the Carolina Panthers. We have a tradition of winning in the Carolinas, and when you want to be a winner in the car, truck, or SUV game, come see the sales and service champions at Everett, because if you didn't get an Everett deal, you dropped the ball, baby. Woo! I love being busy in my garden. I got flowers to plant and beds to clean out. When I was feeling really tired and not like myself, I saw a doctor. Look at me now. The doctors were good, they worked with me, and they laughed with me. I'm back to doing everything I love. I needed a doctor and I found the expert for my heart. I've never tried it. What? You've never tried a cheer wine? It's the unique. Southside Tower and Fitness provides an exclusive discount of almost 50% off for LR faculty, staff, and students. Experience what Southside has to offer at southsidepf.com. The only limit is you. Veterans Day to all of our veterans, first responders as well. Bears on top here, 21-7. Here's a short kickoff by LR, fielded at the 25. And a nice, strong hit. My, oh my, oh, Dr. That's Brown. He hit that running back and he knocked him backwards. Wow. I tell you, he looked like, he, he looked like he's a wide receiver. That was number 17, and that is uh, Tamzir Sick. Wide receiver, 5'8", 180. Boy, I tell you what, he he was in Torino, Italy, by the way. He knocked him in the hey, next week. He did. Welcome to, welcome to USA football. <laughs> I mean, he really, I mean, he almost didn't expect that to happen. It looked like the way he took that hit. Up to the Bear defense now. The Bear offense showing what they can do. Bear defense, time for a little stalwart here. Here's a pass, four receivers out. Quarterback Jones scrambling. Throws it downfield, nearly intercepted. Tried to tightrope the sideline. Jackson couldn't come up with it, but it's incomplete. Second and 10 stops the clock with 10-12. you got to figure if you're the Bear defense, you're looking for a big stop here because Pembroke has had its way with this highly ranked Lenore defense so far. Josh Jones is 6'3 and 220 pounds. He, he doesn't look that big. He, does, he doesn't play that big. He looks like he's a, a smaller, quicker, uh, scat back type quarterback, but he's 6'3, 220. But he moves around in the pocket exceptionally well, has great instincts. Short drop. He's covered this time. He's under pressure, scrambling around, being chased by Luba. And this time he'll keep it, throws it downfield, and a nice tip by Williams. The linebacker for LR got his hand in the passing lane as Jones was scrambling and he knocked it away in complete third and ten. You know, that's what he can do though. I, it, you just, I thought, boy, we finally got our first sack. And, and he's got instincts because he had his back to the rusher and all of a sudden he just stopped and zipped around and the guy ran by him. He, he could not see that rusher. 
he had to feel that. Great instincts on Josh Jackson's part. He can make plays. That turned into, instead of a sack and a 10, 15-yard loss, that turned into an incomplete pass. Empty set. Five receivers are going to go out. Back to pass. Jones floats it down the field. It is off the hands of receiver. And a very, very late flag against LR. It's going to be pass interference against the Bears. And the bad part is the guy that didn't have the best view made the call. The guy that had the best view did not call it. Landon Scott's going to be called. But, you know, what he did, he took a chance just like Grayson did earlier in the game. He had a guy going deep. There's nobody open. He just threw it down there, and he's going to get a 15-yard. He's taking a chance. I tell you, this young man, this, this is the finest game I've seen a quarterback play against us this year. We've had some good efforts by some good quarterbacks, including last week. But this young man right here is just, he's top of the ladder quarterback. Been sacked 27 times this year, and none today. None today yet. And, and it, it just seems like every time we get close to him, he senses it. He's turned, he's turned sacks into incompletions, and, boy, that's, that's great quarterbacking when you can do that. Three receivers out. They'll keep a tight end in. They'll run it this time. Maneuvering his way close to midfield is Young, tackled by the Bears. Williams, along with Houston, I believe, and, and he'll call a gain of three. Second and seven now. Balls at the 48, down to 940 to go in the second quarter. LR leads 21-17. It's been back and forth so far here in the first half. You know, and our, our defensive linemen, you know, last week we played almost the same guys the whole game. We were shuffling a lot of people early in the year. We haven't done that, and Boy, those guys, two interior guys, uh, Houston and Luba, they look, they look tired in there. It's, it's tough. Jones, Cox, and Fires caught on the far side. What a great throw and catch. Close to the first John down, Carter. that's Teddy Creasy. Redshirt freshman out of Charlotte, Mallard Creek High School. Got a lot of guys from Charlotte on this roster. I tell you what, Pembroke, that kid is impressive. He really is. That ja Josh Jackson, he, that ball, or Josh Young, excuse me, that ball was thrown. You know, well before the cut, but he threw it back inside uh, where the, only his guy could get to it. It was another great job of throwing and catching by the Pembroke team. They're, they are so well prepared for this game. I'm really impressed what they're doing. Ball's in LR territory, third and one. Jones calls the play, changes it, gets the offensive line set, comes out of there. He's in the gun, standing at his 50. Turns, hands it, running left. No running room and back in the backfield. Big play, play by the Bear front line. What a that play. is Travis Robinson. Indeed. Starting his, I think, second game as a Bear, true freshman out of Cardinal Gibbons High School in South Florida, makes the stop back in Pembroke territory, and it's going to be a punt now by the Braves. First time this afternoon. So the freshman starting this afternoon and right in, Robinson makes a big time play for the Bears for the loss. Got to be alert right here. This is where you got to be careful. You know, they have nothing to lose. An onside kick, a fake punt today wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if they did it more than once. They have nothing to lose. Parks takes the snap, gets a nice high kick, and he'll go into the end zone. So it's a touchback. So the Bear defense holds. LR's offense, which is packed on 21. They lead it by four. We'll get the ball now at the 20, first and 10. A couple of updates on the Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery scoreboard. Wise on top of Catawba, 21-14. Carson Newman leading Limestone, 24-17. Mars Hill on top of Tusculum, 7-3. Uh, Glenville State tied with number six Notre Dame College, 17-17. And Florida Tech leading North Greenville, 14-0. Top ranked floor of Valdosta State. Plays at West Florida coming up tonight. Valdosta's won 23 straight regular season games. I believe LR second, Jack. They've won 18 straight yeah, and I'll tell you regular what, season games. <laughs> the, Bears, the Bears are in a tussle today to win the 19th. Here's a pitch left, running with the ball. And oh, this? Nice run that time by the Bears. Ryan Carter should be close to a first down, and it is a first down, a custom design group Bear first down. I think Ryan Carter has kind of picked up the slack with Jaquay Mitchell being the only person to play that wing position on one side. He's kind of picked up the slack, and they're, they're getting the ball in his hands more now on running plays than they normally do during the course of a game. Cal Dickey got a handoff earlier, scored his first Bear touchdown. This is the quick pass across the middle, one-handed catch. This is Starks, 40, 
30 and tackle from behind at the 24. That's Drake Starks, pop pass across the middle, and he made a dandy one-headed catch. Wow. That was TV all the way, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, he, we had a fake left off the dive. The linebacker sucked up, and he just popped down the field. That was just a great throwback pass, and what a catch. Well, they had to wait on the chain gang to yeah, get down the field. The crew get down there. The Bears line up quick. After a big play, the Bears will line up quick on you, and they're ready to play. But, you know, the Bears just have made play after play today on offense. They have really made. And Travis Robinson sticks, and, you know, really stood up with a great play on defense for the Bears on that last series. Ramsor checks in at tight end. LR the wing tee. They have the ball in the center of the field. Willingham looks to the sideline. Got about five guys giving hand signals over there. A couple of the quarterbacks, including Gunnar Anderson. Willingham backs out of there in the gun at the 25. Send a man in motion. A hand it left and tackled in the backfield is Young. Good play by the front line for Pembroke. They snuffed it out. Tackled Derek Young in the backfield. Loss of five, second and 15. That was a replay as opposed to the jet sweep. On the jet sweep, we would have blocked that guy. On the replay, uh, we're trying to read him and, and you know, Grayson just made a bad read and uh, cost the Bears a few yards right there. But, you know, the Bears have shown the ability to overcome, uh, you, you know, second and long, third and long so far in this game. They bunch everybody up back to pass Willingham. They're going to throw a screen over here. It is caught by Stevens, 25-20, stiff arm, out of bounds, inside the 20. Goes to mean Stevens. They'll mark it down to the 16. It's going to be about five yards shy, bringing up a third and six now. Third and six for the Bears. With the clock stopped, 6.31 to go before half. LR leading by four, 21-17. Good play call for the Bears right there, too, to get that ball on a little screen, pick up some yardage, make it a more manageable situation on third down. Ball's on the left hash. Willingham under center. Looks to the sideline. We'll get the play. Bears have the formation bunched. This time, Willingham will back out of there in the gun, waiting the snap from Clifton. Gets it, back to pass, looking left, floats it down in the end zone, and incomplete. Yeah, he, that was underthrown that time. That, that, was a, uh, that was Grayson's worst throw of the day. you got to put that ball to the outside. He threw that ball back inside, and our, their defender was in perfect position and had no chance. The ball was intended for Hampton. A little, a little corner out there. Yeah, a little surprised that we went to the end zone at it, too. It was fourth down and about six. I thought we might throw something underneath or throw something a little closer, but Coach already made up his mind what he was going to do. It was going to be field goal. If that was an incomplete pass, it was going to be field goal all the way. So Elbaugh on to attempt the field goal. It's at the 23. Call it a 33-yard kick. Snap is good. Kick is up. And it is good. So the Bears tack on some more points with 5.51 to go here before the half. Bears now lead. It's LR 24. And Pembroke, 17, completes an 80-yard drive in just six plays. And the Bears are back on the board. We'll step aside, come back with more. You're listening to LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Oh, this? I was playing catch a little too hard with a dog. He's got quite an arm. I've been through this before. It'll be better in a couple of days. Probably. Visit one of Ortho Carolina specialists right away by logging on to orthocarolina.com. Leave the waiting to this guy. Come on, honey. Ortho Carolina. You improved. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Teddy Creasy with the return. Tackled by Miles Jackson, number 31.
First to ten for the Braves on their own 26. Pass intended for number 15, Tyshaw and Carter. Coverage by Marcus Rosser, incomplete, second and ten. I'm not sure, but they're definitely they're definitely calling it on Pembroke. The officials explaining to Luba what he did. So they're looking at Pembroke, and it's going to be a penalty. Shot block. Yeah, there were two of them on the ground here, and Luba was here, and that's what they were doing. They were he was explaining to the guy what a shot block is. It's way away from the play, but that's where you get to because one guy is in contact with a guy and then the second player hits him low. You can't do that. If he's in contact with a, a with anybody, you cannot come in and hit him low while he's in contact with another player on the on that offensive team. So the ball is going to be marked back to the 21. That's a 15 yard or two. That's a biggie because that's a that's a knee injury situation right there. Bears got to be tough right now. We got first down and 25. We want to turn this ball over be plenty of time in this quarter to put more points on the board. Bears have been pretty good at forcing turnovers this year. Jones will take a shot down the field. Bears had good caught coverage. It. Caught. I tell you. Caught. Bears have excellent coverage on the field. That kid is, he is so much all. There you go. Good call. And a yeah. flag will go against Pembroke's receiver who celebrated go, after he made a spectacular go, catch. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Oh. But the Bears had good coverage. Milliken on the stop. He had the uh, Excellent man-to-man -man coverage, but the receiver just outfought him for the ball. It was a that perfect was Mar throw. Yeah, Marcus yeah. McDonald was caught the football. Yeah, he threw that ball just perfectly for his man to have a shot. That's it. I tell you, he's having a heck of a football game. And then this is this should be. I'm, I'm going to play this game first down in 25 because after this play, happened after the play. play kind of offense to 13. The 15 yard penalty will be first down. Right. First down, but it should be shouldn't it be first to 25 if it happened after it? I don't guess they do that anymore. Yeah, they're making it first and 10. But see, that's what they can do. They, I mean, they just throw the ball down the field, and they've been able to run down there and catch it. And you know, we had a first and 25. They pick it up on one play. You know, they have just been they they they're well coached this football game. I, I hadn't seen the other other games, but they are so well prepared for the Bears offensively right now. They just can't stop us. That's their problem. First and 10, running with the ball. Again, Sheridan will get it up close to midfield, pick up about five. Clayton Horn, Clayton Horn on the stop along with Williams for LR, but not before Josh Sheridan. Josh Sheridan, redshirt senior out of Lumberton High School, leading rusher on the team, picked up five. That's one of the things that, uh, you know, they did early on. They got away from them a little bit, and I thought they should get back to it. They were picking up four or five yards. See, they did right here on first down. They ran the ball on those early series and picked up four and five yards. Second and five. Clock rolling. 4.15 to go here in the second. 
Bears leading 24-17. Jones out of the gun. Receivers to both sides. Ball's on the right hash. He'll take the snap. Maybe a timeout. Too much time. Timeout, Pembroke. We'll step aside real fast. Stay with us. Bears on top here, back with more. This is LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Quality work that's on. NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement. I'm excited to partner up with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and sponsor Lenore Ryan Athletics. Come see us at Paramount Automotive for all your car buying needs. And remember, we sell tires, lots of tires. Go Bears! Back here after the timeout, second and five, Pembroke has it midfield. Quarterback Jones hands it left, running left. Nope, he keeps it. He's going to run right side and tackle in the open field by Joseph. Shoestring tackle, shy of the first. We'll pick up about three, but a nice open field tackle by the Bear inside linebacker, Joseph. It's going to bring up third and short now for the Braves. Again, good scramble there with Preston Joseph. He plays a lot in situations where they go to, uh, they want to play pass, and Sherrod Williams plays that same position, but Preston's got good speed. He was not able to outrun him to the outside. Keep in mind, Bears beat this Pembroke team a year ago, 51-3. They returned two passes for touchdowns against Jones when he was the quarterback. Not today. He's off to a great start. Has his team third and short, back to pass. Down the middle, caught, first down. Inside the LR 40. And running with the ball before he's hit and knocked down is Quay Threat, the redshirt senior out of Central Academy in Monroe, North Carolina. Has another first down for the Braves with 3.05 to go. Trying to tie this game, trailing by seven. Great job interiorly then. The offensive line and the running back picked up the blitz. The Bears had the all-out blitz, had seven guys coming, and they all were blocked. And Jones stood in there just like a good quarterback supposed to do. He stood right there in the face of the rush and delivered the ball on time for a first down. Twins left, ball's in the center of the field. He'll send one man in motion, fake it to him, and hand it up the middle. Sheridan gets a good game. Again, the first down run has Josh been the key, the I think. Area. Every time they've run the ball on first down, they've had a good drive. They just continually do that now. You pick up four, five, six, this time almost seven yards on first down. Now you got three, you're in four, you're in four down territory, so you got three to make the first if you choose to do so. Their offensive coordinator, John Cox, has been in this program for six years. Their staff is based out of the Midwest, Upper Michigan, Cox is the coach in the NFL with Tampa Bay and Jacksonville as well. There's a run by Sheridan, first down inside the 25 before he's tackled at the 23, but another first down run by Josh Sheridan. Tackled by Taylor, Malik Taylor from a safety spot, but not before the Braves get a first down at the 23. Moving into the closed end here at Moret Stadium with one under two minutes to go here in the ball game in the first half. Bears leading 24-17. Best first half against an LR defense this season. Yeah, and seven, since last year. Points, yeah. yeah. And then since last year, when we saw them uh, play Valdosta in the last game of the year in the playoffs. Pass down the middle, man open, caught inside the 15, close to another first down. Goes three out of the 12. That should be good enough for another brave first down. You know, when you when you don't get pressure, it, it, it really makes it tough because our we play we play a lot of zone back there, and he's just he stayed in the pocket when we haven't been able to get there and pressure him, and he's really delivered the ball on time. Now that's the secret to what they're doing so far. Here's a run by Sheridan. He'll get back up maybe to the 11, call it a gain of one. 
Second and 11, a guy we haven't called a lot today. Jaquan Artis made the stop, the senior out of Kinston, who came into this game with 10 sacks. And the leading tackler on the Bears, we haven't called his name a lot today because I tell you what, Pembroke has avoided him, and uh, they've done a great job in scheming their offense here in the first half. Under a minute to go, trying to tie it here. Braves down by seven, Bears leading. Stack receivers right, rolling right. Jones looking, looking, throws it away. Incomplete, second down, 43 seconds to go. Second, no, third down and nine now, third and nine for the Braves. Clock stops, big play coming up here. And Pembroke made two really big plays on this drive. Remember, we had them third down and we had them first and 25. And, you know, there were about five minutes to go. I thought we're going to get the ball back with a chance to score again. And instead, you know, they've run the clock down. So even if they don't score here or maybe kick a field goal or maybe score a touchdown, Bears are not going to have much time on the clock to do anything. This is a big series because Pembroke will get the ball to start the second half. And you got to you got to think here, too, about, you know, what's he going to do if they don't get it. They're going to use the timeout right now. They're going to think about it because – this is a big third down play because if you don't pick up some yardage here, you know, you're not, you got to kick field goal when it's third down and nine. I mean, fourth and nine. I don't think it'd be any question that they would not kick a field goal and, you know, cut the lead to 24 24 20 going in at halftime. Oh, by the way, Juju, uh, Virginia Wise, their first conference win, I guess, right? Did they won a conference game? I don't think so. Okay, they beat Catawba today, 21 14. Bears go to Catawba next week, final 21-14. That are some scoring updates for you. Florida Tech leading North Greenville, 14-0. Waiting that Virginia Union, Virginia State for the CIAA championship, and the winner will move into either the six or seven seed in the playoff run in the region. There's no, no score been, has shown up on that game. 24-20, Carson Newman, Limestone. That's that's still, that game's still reporting in the third quarter, so that's, you know, but Carson Newman's only scored a field goal since the first, uh, first or second quarter. Back to action. Bears need a stop. Third and nine. Ball's at the 11. Got a three-man rush here. See what's going to happen. With a three-man rush, probably won't be any pressure. Jackson, you know, he's going to have time to find somebody. Jones, a uh, screen, a uh, rolling left, throwing in the end zone, tipped and incomplete. I'm trying to look down there. Bears had about five guys around, <laughs> one player for Pembroke, and I don't know anybody that knocked the football away. It may be in Jackson, but that's going to force a field goal. I'm with you on that because when he threw the ball, I saw their receiver leap up in the air, and I said, oh, my goodness, he's going to catch him for a touchdown. And all of a sudden, he got hit by about five different people, and the ball flew out the back of the end zone. Great job by the Bears secondary. Artis was coming on the blitz that time off the edge, and he spun out of there, Jones, the quarterback did. So here's the field goal attempt will be a 28 yard kick snap is down kick is up they missed say he missed it and he did wow what a 70 drive. yard drive in 40 uh, 14 plays that's and a missed field goal opportunity there wow that that <laughs> i don't think that's a game changer but boy that's really something right there because for the bears because that was another tremendous drive by the pembroke Braves. And, and the Bears the Bears couldn't do a lot to stop them and then finally held them down there on the goal line and then they missed the field goal. But the Bears avoided right here. Pembroke, keep in mind, will get the ball to start the second half. LR leading 24-17. They come out on offense. 29 seconds to go. We got a couple of special guests coming up at halftime, including the director of operations for Lenore Ryan football, Tanner Hardy. He's going to talk about what happened this week with Lenore Ryan player Duggar. And there is a long pass flag called here. It's going to be a defensive holding call. Kyle Duggar was featured on uh, Sports Illustrated this week, NFL.com. Got an invite to the Senior Bowl, first LR player to do so. We'll hear about that coming up at halftime with the Bears Director of Football Operations, Tanner Hardy. Join us coming up, but we'll wait with the penalty is against. Was that pass catchable though? As it was thrown over the head of the receiver, Hampton. A lot of talking down here about what is going on. There's 25 seconds left before the half. Bears leading. 
24-17. It's been back and forth. If you just joined us, thanks for listening along the Bears Sports Network yep. today on WSBM Radio. It's uncatchable. You know, usually what the when you when you see these officials of the gathering, I know in basketball what we always did is we, we gathered for something like this and it didn't involve a rule. It was a judgment situation. The official would come to me or I would go to him and we would say, This is what I saw and then let him make the decision on based on what I told him, what what he saw, what you're gonna do with it. It's like the Bears are gonna take a knee and they will. 24 seconds left. That'll do it. We'll go to the half. When we come back, we'll take a halftime break. we got our halftime show to come. We'll hear from the LR Marching Band, a couple of special guests as well. Stay with us. Bears lead it here. It's LR 24, Pembroke 17. You're listening to LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. UNC Pembroke 17. Oh, this? I was playing catch a little too hard with the dog. He's got quite an arm. I've been through this before. It'll be better in a couple of days. Probably. Visit one of Ortho Carolina specialists right away by logging on to orthocarolina.com. Leave the waiting to this guy. Come on, honey. Ortho Carolina. You improve. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. college degree would have been completely different had I not run Division II cross country for the University of Mount Olive. Having an athletic and academic scholarship was key for my success. Our coaches were really helpful with balancing out my academics and athletics. I decided to attend graduate school because I wanted to become an athletic director. Receiving the postgraduate scholarship through the NCAA provided me with the flexibility to choose the school that I wanted. So now I know that I can accomplish any goal that I set for myself. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours.
knew that there was an opportunity to have my college paid for if I was good enough to play baseball at that level. That was going to make a big difference in my family. D2 baseball gave me an opportunity to play at a high level and to get an education that's going to be valuable for me throughout the rest of my life. I chose to take my experience of being a student athlete and pursue that within my career and to get a master's degree. If I wouldn't have had a baseball scholarship, there'd be no chance that I'm doing what I'm doing today. Paramount Kia in Hickory. We want to see you driving a new Kia or, hey, a quality pre-owned Kia. We've got a huge selection of new and pre-owned Kias. you got to get to Paramount Kia in Hickory. Highway 70, ParamountKia.com. Everett Chevrolet Buick GMC is ready for another exciting football season. Everett has been a proud sponsor of the Lenore Ryan Bears for 25 years, and we wish the Bears a safe and successful season. And August means it's all systems go for another winning season with the Carolina Panthers. We have a tradition of winning in the Carolinas, and when you want to be a winner in the car, truck, or SUV game, come see the sales and service champions at Everett, because if you didn't get an Everett deal, you dropped the ball, baby. Woo! I love being busy in my garden. I got flowers to plant and beds to clean out. When I was feeling really tired and not like myself, I saw a doctor. Look at me now. The doctors were good, they worked with me, and they laughed with me. I'm back to doing everything I love. I needed a doctor and I found the expert for my heart. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? You know, eyes on our article and so it was awesome man and I was just sitting there letting them kind of piggyback off each other and I'm just retweeting every single thing that we've got and posting stuff on Instagram and I was I was staring at my phone bell all day by the time I got home I just turned it off and I just I was like I can't look at a screen anymore <laughs> halftime guest Tanner Hardy Bears lead 24 17 uh, Tanner's used to this kind of stuff. You worked at Alabama the last few years. I did. I did. I was fortunate enough. I did uh, undergrad and grad school down there. It's been a been a little bit of a been a little bit of a culture change, just in terms of uh, resources and, and getting the the D two lifestyle just a little bit more under my belt. But hey, the one consistent thing that we've been doing is winning. So I like joking with the guys. So I can count on my fingers the close regular season games that we've uh, that I've worked with the last five years or so. And it's uh, I hope they don't keep it going i mean this this one's a little closer than a little comfort but uh pembroke's good uh, pembroke's a team that their record doesn't really show how good they are we knew they were good on offense when they came in and knew we had to be on our toes i know that last week was such an awesome weekend and atmosphere in here that uh it's it's a little different trying to get that energy back up after such an emotional weekend but you know, I'm confident in our guys being able to go in there and figure it out at halftime. Hopefully we'll come out fired in the second half. There have been some close games in Division Two already today. Notre Dame undefeated, lost today to Glenville State. Really? Yeah, they lost uh, former LR head coach Mike Keller guiding them to a 23-20 win over Notre Dame. They were sixth in the nation and undefeated. So some surprises around here this afternoon, and um, the Bears are leading here 24-17. Best part about being back in Hickory, you grew up in Hickory. Seeing your family more? Yeah, seeing my family more and honestly just seeing how much everything's grown and yeah. how much of a, you know impact that LR can have on this community. I, I, I like to tell people, I mean, if you're going to drive to a football game living in here, you're either going to go to App or you're going to stay here because other than that, I mean, you're going to drive two and a half, three hours to go anywhere else. And so we're trying to make this the the best show in this area in our in our community. They're, they're wanting they're thriving. They're, they're aching for something, yeah. some success. So um, I've, I've seen firsthand just kind of what football can do to a community, and I, uh, I'm excited to see where we can go from here, and hopefully we've got a couple more home games after this. Absolutely. Uh, the Bears, the only Lenore 
Ryan, the only college football team in the state of North Carolina that's undefeated. How about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Tanner, appreciate you coming up, man. Hey, I appreciate continue, you guys Continue the great work, man. You're doing Absolutely. a wonderful job. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Hope you guys will let me stay up here in the heat for a little bit. <laughs> okay. Tanner Hardy, our halftime guest, joining us this afternoon. Member of the Lenore Ryan coaching staff, social media, and digital media as well. Continue with more. Stay with us. Halftime here at Barrett Stadium on the campus of LR. It's 24-17 in favor of the Bears. Back after this, this is LR football powered by Carolina West Wireless. And say Beetlejuice three times. Ready? Go! Beetlejuice! 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 Back at halftime, Juju Phillips, Jack Huss, Mike McCree, and our cast of thousands continue to grow. Bears on top, 24-17. A few minutes ago, you heard from Tanner Hardy, who's part of the Bear promotional staff with digital media, looking at present, future Lenore Ryan and all the digital stuff and media stuff that's going on. We're going to take a trip back into the history of Lenore Ryan football as they celebrate 100 years of Bear football. And uh, Greg Rogers, who's one of the I guess, Greg, were you the, one of the first, if not the first, original sports information director? Uh, I wouldn't say one of the first or the original, but I was one of the few student SIDs that we had here at Lenorine back. I started in 1976 through 1980. Okay, and uh, you were here when I got here, of course. Uh, and I guess, did Jack recruit you to be sports information director? No, no. <laughs> well, actually, I knew Jack from when he played here at Lenorine. I, I, we moved here in 1966. My father was a chaplain here at Lenorine. Uh, I got to see Wayne Bell and Carl Bartles and some of the historical players here. And I watched Jack play and Mike McCree and some of those. But uh, 
I think Coach Painter was the one who really recruited me. My Coach Painter knew my dad and knew that I had done this at Hickory High School, uh, this through publicity and some writing. So he asked me if I'd like to try over here at Lenore. And so that's how I got here. And you've been a fan for a long, long time. We see you in the stands all the time, and we see you on social media. We're friends on Facebook and whatnot. But uh, we talked about last week, and you have seen just about every home game since you've been in Hickory between the bricks here. Last week's crowd not only was the most boisterous as everybody was kind of packed in, it was one of the largest crowds we've ever seen, huh? Yeah, it was a great, great atmosphere. I think one of the best I've ever seen. The only thing I can think I compare it to and, and things I've seen is back when Appalachian used to come down here in the late 60s and we'd have Appalachian on the North Rhine here. That was really quite a spectacle as well, but certainly in the recent history, that was probably the best atmosphere uh, for any college game I've ever been to. It was fantastic. Yeah, over 10,000 fans. And have you seen the the resurgence of Lenore Ryan football, then a dip a little bit a couple of years back, and now it's back to where it was back in 2013, 2010, 2014, that four-year period. Uh, it's it's wonderful to see. From your, from your side of it, watching it from the stands, what do you think has made this Lenore Ryan football team so special this year? Well, I, I, it reminds me a lot of a few years ago when we went to the National Championship. It's all about the culture for one thing. Um, I get here early and watch the teams warm up, and you can see it's a business-like approach. People are concentrating. They're working on what uh, just the little, uh, the little things. I think it's culture. I think it's the type of uh, player that we're recruiting now. You know, they're, they're good, hard. They're good kids and they're coachable kids, and they work hard, and they listen, and by the time they're seniors, they're good football players. Yeah. One of the other things as well, and you, you mentioned your dad was a former chaplain here, is the, the importance of faith that Coach Cronick has brought to the program has really spread out. And I, I've been to a number of practices. He quotes scripture after yeah. practice and before practice, and uh, that's something that's – very, it's become a very big part of right. this program. Right. And I, I think it's really wonderful. I was really impressed. I got here one Saturday morning for a practice, and since I work out of town, I don't get to come to practice very often. But I did not know it at the time, but I did see him read a scripture and have about maybe a 30-second or a minute talk about it and, uh, and had one of the players lead, lead them in prayer, and I, I was very, very impressed. And I was really glad to see it at a faith-based institution like Lenore Ryan. And uh, when you look at... Your years and your memories of Lenore Ryan football, what comes to mind, first off? Well, first off, I remember coming to all these games with my family, my mom, my dad, and my two brothers, and then going on the road, you know. Uh, we were reminiscing today a little bit about going on to watch Catawba and Lenore Ryan play on Thanksgiving Day every day, every year. I remember eating ham sandwiches in the car on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> one t at one time, it was pouring down rain, and... I remember my mom telling my dad, Lou, that's it. We're not going to do this again. No more Thanksgivings in the rain eating ham sandwiches. So I think that's one of the things that I remember the most out of my childhood. Great experiences, Greg. We yeah. appreciate you coming up and talking Lenore Ryan Sports. And uh, Bear football in this community means a lot to a lot of people, doesn't it? It does. It means a lot to me and to my family. You know, my brothers, um, one in Mississippi and one in South Carolina, they stay in touch and they watch online when they can. And they, they In fact, they've each been to games in the last few years. So it's uh, it means a lot. And not just the people who still live here, but people who are across the country that, that keep in touch and, and watch the Bears play. We were saying last week during the broadcast, our friend Trip Cody was listening to us in Jamaica. Is that right? He sent yeah. us a text with a picture and said, hey, listen to you guys from Jamaica. Yeah. Uh, and that was amazing yeah. indeed. That's pretty neat. Pretty neat. You know, back when I was SID, I look around here and see computers and stats. You know, we used to keep the stats in a little book. We had to write it down. And we hand wrote stats to give to the, uh, to give to the newspaper folks. It's pretty amazing now to see all the electronics and instant communication and instant statistics being printed out. It's pretty cool. It sure is. Greg, thank you, buddy. Juju, thank you. Always I appreciate it. And thank you what you and Juju and what Jack, you guys do for this community. We appreciate it. I think Jack wants to say something before you go. Yeah, okay. Thanks, man. Uh, that's Greg Rogers, a former student sports information director, became the SID when when you were the head coach for Lenore Ryan back in the uh, 70s. Greg's a great guy, and uh, he's been a part of uh, Lenore Ryan for a long, long time, first as a fan, and prior to that, of course, as a student in uh, student SID. We'll step aside. We're at halftime as we were listening to the marching band. Still got a couple of minutes to go. We'll come back and give you the first half stats and look ahead to the second half. Your score, Lenore Ryan leads here, bears on top of Pembroke. It's LR24 and Pembroke 17. Come right back. This is LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. It's Nick at Paramount Automotive, and we're proud to sponsor Lenore Ryan Football. Go Bears! 
Come see us on Highway 70. We've got a huge inventory of new Volkswagens, Volvos, Porsches, Hyundais, and Kias. Plus, did you know we sell tires and we'll be any competitor's price on tires every day. If you're thinking about selling your car, we'll buy your car, truck, or SUV, even if you don't buy a car from us. So during those timeouts, check our inventory at ParamountAuto.com and score a touchdown at Paramount Automotive. Boy, that was a hard hit. When the Bears get banged up, they go to Richard Williams, official team chiropractor for the LR Bears. And he's the best. At People's Bank, we believe what makes you different makes you exceptional. Maybe you're a great listener or teach kids to read. Perhaps you rescue dogs or own your own bakery. What's unique about you is what we cherish most. With a name like People's Bank, you know we care about people. And we are here to help you achieve exceptional goals. People's Bank. Be exceptional. Member FDIC. When you're in the middle of training, you're, of course, pushing yourself harder than usual, right? Well, when I felt a surge of knee pain, I wanted to push through, but I knew something was wrong. So I headed to Ortho Carolina Urgent Care. Since they're open nights and weekends with locations all over, it was easy to get the opinion of a certified orthopedic specialist, one I could trust and help me get back to training. Online appointment scheduling is now available. Just visit orthocarolina.com to schedule your appointment today. No referral necessary. That's Ortho Carolina. Dot com. Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery is a proud supporter of the Lenore Ryan Bears Den. Live music, brain busting trivia, and our drink specials keep the Bears coming back. Join us Saturdays and ask for a brewery tour. That's Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery is walking distance from Lenore Ryan's campus at the intersection of Highland Avenue and Lenore Ryan Boulevard in our newly renovated Holler Mill location. Honor the craft with a toast to our bears at Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery. And no bears. Your health care journey is unique. That's why at Fry Regional Medical Center, they're dedicated to being experts in you. From personalized solutions for your joint pain to patient-centered heart care, they're here for you every step of the way. As part of Duke LifePoint Healthcare, they have renowned expertise on their side. That means they can lead you to even better health. At Fry Regional, they're not just experts in health care, they're experts in your health care. To learn more, visit MyFryRegional.com. Fry Regional is a proud sponsor of the Lenore Ryan Bears. Quality work that's on time and within budget. Sound too good to be true? Well, it is true with David E. Looper and Company, a general contracting company that has a diverse range of building experience, including medical office complexes, retail shopping centers, educational facilities, as well as design build projects. They take pride in the quality of their work that's completed on time and within budget. For your future building needs, contact David E. Looper and Company, licensed in multiple states, fully insured and bonded. David E. Looper and Company, a proud sponsor of the LR Bears. Halftime, Juju Phillips, Jack Huss, Mike McCree. Thanks to Greg Rogers, Tanner Hardy joining us in the booth this afternoon. Bears lead 24-17, second half of football action still to come. Jack, a couple of stats as you look. We'll get to some of the scores, but as you look at the first half stats, brought to you by Mike Johnson, Hickory Toyota. It's been pretty close. Bears took the lead late in the second half, and we saw where Pembroke missed a field goal. They'll get the ball to start the second half. How do the stats look right now? Well, as, as you might suspect, uh, Pembroke leads the stats in almost every category, but the Bears lead on the scoreboard. That's what counts. The, the, this is a hard stat to believe. The Bears in the first half only had the ball nine minutes and 56 seconds. Uh, UNC Pembroke had it for 20 minutes and four seconds, so really a disparity in the time of possession. But the Bears were efficient with theirs. They took the ball down the field and scored. With the exception of the fumble, they scored every time that they got the football in their hands with the exception of the fumble. So, you know, 257 yards for total offense for Pembroke, 239 total offense for the Bears. Bears only ran 25 plays, but again, were very efficient. Pembroke ran 40 plays. We'll see if that changes again. Pembroke will receive. Bears will kick off. They'll kick it to the closed end of Moret Stadium left to right. Alba approaches it at the 35. High kick, short kick, fielded at about the 21. Running right, cutting back left, and in the open. 40, 50 into LR territory and sneaks out of bounds. Nice run that time by Pembroke, Trey Dixon, a wide receiver out of Gibson, North Carolina, and Scotland High School, where he was a teammate of Bear fullback Warren Bell, and that is deep into LR territory. I don't know if they'll 
take those pooch kicks any much, much well, more. No, I'll tell you what. Give Pembroke a lot of credit. I, I was surprised that uh, Wingett didn't do this last week. They moved their two deep guys up to the short positions. So they had a flyer catch the football. They've been catching them with big tight ends and guys like that. They're blockers. They had a flyer up there. One of their deep guys moved up and caught the ball, and he made the Bears pay. And Pembroke, again, will not go away in this football game. Handoff. Sheridan gets it over the 35 before he's stacked and pushed backwards. Sheridan, the leading ball carry in that first half with nine carries for 39 yards. Average a little over four yards a carry. Picked up three that time, second and seven. Stopped by Williams and Horn. I tell you, we were kind of joking about it starting out, but, uh, you know, the way this game is flowing right now, it could be a high-scoring game with uh, 24-17 at halftime. You know, the Bears may have to put it in the end zone every possession because Pembroke is, uh, you know, eating up the clock, and they're not getting as many points right now, but they're eating up the clock. Second and seven. Ball's in LR territory. Jones back to pass. Floats it left side. End zone, man open. Touchdown. Touchdown. Beat Milliken in the end zone. Perfect pass. Boy, that kid, I'll tell you what, he's a kid who got hurt earlier. Brown is Sean Brown with the reception. And Beat man to man coverage, and we're about to be tied here. And the Bears, I tell you, they just absolutely have struggled all year with anything thrown deep. They just, you know, the defensive back never saw the football. The kid, the kid did push off a little bit now. Uh, he pushed off a little bit over there on our corner, but they, he just never saw the football. Ivan Melica never had a clue where the ball was until it was caught. 36-yard drive after the long kickoff return, two plays, and Pembroke's tied it. They have only did it in 56 seconds, and we're tied, folks. Seventh-ranked Lenore Ryan and Pembroke, 24-24. Back with more. Stay with us. This is LR Football. Powered by Carolina West Wireless. It's Nick at Paramount Auto. Oh, this? I was playing catch a little too hard with a dog. He's got quite an arm. I've been through this before. It'll be better in a couple of days. Probably. Visit one of Ortho Carolina's specialists right away by logging on to orthocarolina.com. Leave the waiting to this guy. Come on, honey. Ortho Carolina. You improved. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do more at richardwilliamschiropractic.com. Tied to 24 as we just start the second half, and here's a short kick by Pembroke, fielded by Dickey at the 25, running over the 35 and up to the 36-yard line. Check that. That's Joseph. Yeah, I'll see again. They they've got they moved their guys up there. We got a linebacker catching the ball. <laughs> they had a guy back there that was a wide receiver catching the ball. That big change on field position. But the Bears got great field position right here, so there's no no excuse. The Bears just have to keep scoring points because it looks like it's going to be that type of game. When, when offensively, you know you don't feel like, or defensively you don't feel like you can match up, and you know you got to score. You try to reduce the game to one-on-one -on -one situations, and that's what they have done so well today. They're wide receivers against our uh, defensive backs. Here's a pass on first down. Stevens hauls it in out of the backfield. He'll lunge forward before he's knocked down by a foot tackle at about the 38. That's a pickup of three, second and seven. Grayson Willingham, first half, six of eight for 142. He's now up to about 145 yards, seven of nine. He, Threw a touchdown pass. Bears didn't run the ball, but 97 yards led by Mitchell's 35 and Ryan Carter's 33. So to see if the Bears can maintain possession here. Tied at 24 as we just start the second half. Willingham under center. Turns and hands it off. Stevens running left. Gets it over the 40. Up to about the 41. Shy the first down. Pick up a three. Bringing up a critical third down and four at one time. A couple of games ago, the Bears were well over 50% on third down, but they've struggled the last couple of games and now have a third and four at the 41. First possession here in the second half after Pembroke tied it on their first possession in under a minute, 24-24 here. Willingham now this time 
Goes under center. He'll take the snap from Clifton. Sends a man in motion. Play action. Looking downfield. Throws it. High throwing complete. Carter took a hit that time, but the pass, he was open. He threw it over his head and complete. The Bears are going to be forced to punt the football, I think. They will punt the football. There's no question. It's too early in the game to go panic right now. But the Bears are, you know, they're in, they're in a tough little situation here. Offensively, they didn't have a good series, and they gave up a score on two plays. You know, so the game's tied, and, and we've only played three minutes. This almost sounds like the Bears' offense. You know, when you score in two plays, and 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 then you hold the other team, get the ball back immediately. So it's going to be it's going to be a tussle for the Bears the rest of the way. Willingham just missed him. Carter was open. Here's a punt off the side of the foot of Owen, but takes an LR roll Boy, inside the 20 yard line. So that'll be. A nice kick of about 35 yards. Should be right at the 20. Yep, that's where he put it, right at the 20-yard line. Good call, Juju. But, you know, the Bears, again, you know, it's just been a struggle all day defensively. We we don't match up very good uh, in the secondary today. They've got a freshman wide receiver that we have not been able to stop. You know, we haven't been able to cover him. They've run the ball effectively, which is something last week to, that Wingate could not do. So, you know, we may be experiencing the effects of that win get win, win last week with the defense. Josh Jones, who was sacked five times against Newberry in a loss in overtime. Newberry winning that game in overtime. He hasn't been sacked today. Hands it off to Sheridan over the middle, and he'll get it up to about the 27-yard line. Yep. First down. He gave oh, okay. Yards. All right. Yep. He got it up to the 30. It's first down. That didn't look good, but again, their runs on first down have been very important in my mind because when you run that ball that well on first down, then that gives you the option the next first down to run or throw, and uh, sometimes you can hit a play pass in this situation. First and ten with three receivers out. Quarterback in the gun. That's Jones. No handed right side. Horn meets him in the hole. And the running back takes it forward. Young, 5'10", 205-pound freshman out of Charlotte's South Mecklenburg High. Not before he picks up five. Second and five. Balls at the 35. Left hash mark. 11.45 in the third. Pembroke has already scored. Now they have it on their next possession after they force the Bears three and out. Balls at the 35. They get the play from the sidelines. Most of the field now in, in shade. Quarterback Jones. Where's number 12? Out of the gun, pistol formation. He turns and hands it off, running left, the back, looking for some room. No running room this time for Young. He is met right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe call it a gain of one. Artis and Houston in on the stop. Third down and three, big third down here for Pembroke and the Bear defense. Yeah, third down has not been a good down for the Bears. Uh, they're four of eight on third down, and that's pretty strong. Anytime you're 50% or higher on that, and now they got a big 80, or big 84. He's tall and slender, but he's the guy to look out. They're going to run that, probably run that little stop route. Everybody goes down about seven, eight yards. There he is. Boom, first down. It is. Threw it out and <laughs> completed it to number 84. And that is Brown, the inside receiver, just ran an out route. Yeah, every time cleared out everybody. Yeah, and every time he's in the game, the ball goes to him. He's not a starter. I didn't even have him on the depth chart. I had to ride him in. But every time he's in the ball game, they found him. See, here comes the receiver. See, now this is their usual group of receivers they have in the game now. But he's caught the balls all day. That's the second crucial third down situation, I remember. And he's had the two long balls, the two over-the-shoulder throws, one for a touchdown and one for a big play. First down run at the 45. Sheridan gates the handoff from Jones. No running room. Stopped by the Bears up front. Houston and looked like Robinson set the Bears starters on defense right now. Houston, they've been out there a lot today. Luba, Artis, and Robinson, Williams, and Horn. And in the secondary, it's uh, Milliken, Scott, Malik Taylor, Jackson, and I believe Javar Smith in there now at corner. At 4-2-5 defense being tested today. The Bears only give up 15 points a game already. Pembroke has scored 24 season high against that LR defense. Second and eight. Jones back to pass. Under pressure this time and goes down. Quarterback goes down coming off the edge. That is Jaquan Artis. Got him from behind and sacked him. Third down. Loss of one on the play. But Artis gets his 11th sack of the season. And that was a big and first sack of the afternoon. Yeah, and I tell you, he was setting it up. They were trying to go deep over here to number 84. 
they put him in the slot, and then they ran him to the outside. He's lined up in the slot. He's lined up as the, the main wide receiver. He's lined up in several positions. Freshman Miles Jackson checks in. They take out a defensive back, so uh, a defensive lineman. So they have six backs in the backfield now. Back to pass. Jones, all kind of time. Shoots it across the middle, complete. And a first down to the 42 of LR. On third down to nine, Jones finds his receiver across the middle. That's McDonald. And a big first down for the Braves. Well, when, when you go zone defense and you give a guy that long to throw, you, you, your zone's not going to be very good. They were, they just had way too long to throw there. Bears got no pressure at all. and He just sits in the pocket and waited. That receiver had to come all the way across the field into the middle, and that was just well-executed play on Pembroke's part. They're just, they're just playing a great offensive game today. Eight and a half to go in the third, tied at 24 here. Seventh-ranked LR. 18 game winning streak on the line today. Regular season back to pass. Jones steps up, throws over here. Caught near the first down marker at the 32. First down. Our defensive back was at least six yards off of when he caught that ball. That, I tell you, those guys back there, I, and I can understand, I've coached defensive backs before. They're, they're just gun shy. They've just been beat so much now. It's just get, they get gun shy. I mean, they're laying off of guys because they, they want the guy to run by them and catch this long ball. And, you know, they just throw underneath. And we've seen that. You know, Carson Newman even did that. We saw that a lot. And that, that's a non-passing team. First down now for the Braves. Sheridan spins out, breaks a tackle. First down, 20, 15. And hauled down from behind by Williams inside the 10, down to the 7. Great second effort by Sheridan, a little diminutive running back. Took it up the middle, couldn't get tackled, spun out of there and picked up the first down and first and goal. Well, I tell you what, you know you're having a good day when Clayton Horn hit that guy face up in the backfield. Face up in the backfield and he bounced off and fell down and the runner went for about 20 yards. That was, a, that was a great run because Clayton Horn just nailed him. So Pembroke first and goal. Sheridan takes it again First into down. the end zone, untouched. Wow. Barely got touched, and the Braves have gone ahead here. Wow. In the third quarter, 7.40 to go. They've scored two touchdowns here in the third quarter play. The crowd has gone silent, and the Braves lead the Bears here. 30 to 24, capping an 80-yard drive in 10 plays. Wow, I tell you what, this is an impressive, this is an impressive offensive performance been on this field in a long time. <laughs> they are really look good on offense right now. Pembroke does. Bears don't seem to be playing with a lot of emotion today. <laughs> There's no emotion, but I tell you, you know, we 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 would win this game on talent most of the time. But when you give a team like this a team that can score, and we said that going in, go back and look at the games they played. They have scored points this year. The problem is their defense has given up points. They've already got one stop, and the Bears have no stops in this half. You know, and it, you know, defensively, if, if that's the way it's going to be, both teams have to score no mistakes. What's your game plan? Pembroke came into this game averaging 27 and have scored 31. Bears came in averaging 43 and have 24. So it looks like a shootout indeed. And the Bears trail for the first time in the second half all year. That's for sure. 31-24, 7.40 to go in the third. And they'll receive the football here. Bears are back. That is Young and Mitchell standing in the open end here at Moret Stadium. Again, a good crowd on hand this afternoon. Chilly temperatures for sure. Coldest game of the year. LR and its Cardinal Bear Black or Bear, Bear Blood red uniforms. Pembroke came in with the black pants, white jerseys, and the black helmets. They'll kick it off. And here we go, 35-yard line waiting to kick by the kicker is uh, Braswell. Here's one that is kicked on the ground, fielded by LR at the 40. At the 45 before he's knocked down. Bears get excellent field position. Receiving the ball was tied in that time for LR. Backup tight end, 84, Dom Maggio. Freshman out of Buford, Georgia. He'll get it up to the 45. So LR gets good field position, trailing by seven. They led at halftime by three. And now here we go. They've seen excellent offense here in the third quarter by Pembroke, scoring on two touchdowns. LR trying to get something going here. 
And the Bears threw the ball so successfully in the first half, but did not run the ball very successfully. And here's a run. Nice run by Ryan Carter, I believe. Carter gets it over the midfield stripe and into Pembroke territory at the 49. It'll be about an eight-yard pickup for Ryan Carter, who in the first half had maybe his best first half we've seen running the ball, second on the team. His fifth carry is now over 40 yards on the ground. Bears have it second and three. Yeah, he, he planted that foot and turned it upfield. He, at times this year, he's tried to go too wide. He did a Jaquay Mitchell there. He planted that foot and turned it straight upfield. That's why he got seven yards out of it. Mitchell and, again, Carter in there. Mitchell gets it, sweeping left. Gets the first down. Follows his blockers to the 45 and a custom design group first down. Bears got to kill some clock here, let their defense get a little rest because uh, Pembroke has really dominated the play here in the third quarter. And I think that's one reason why you might see Coach uh, Chronic right now running the football. He knows we can move the football through the air. We proved that in the first half. Our running game was not as strong in the first half as what we would normally see, but yet the Bears had 24-17 lead. Checking in is Dickey. Bears in the wing tee. Look, under center, Willingham. Man goes in motion. They hand it to Stevens, and he has met like a stone wall there at the front line. Means Stevens had little running room in the first half. He gets it to the 44, gain of one. Second and nine, 6.20 to go in the third. LR trailing here over Pembroke, 31-24. We've already had one major upset in Division II today. Unranked Linville State knocked off sixth-ranked Notre Dame, unbeaten 23-20. Earlier today, Carson Newman beats Limestone 24-20. Tusculum beat Mars Hill 10-7. Yeah, that Carson Newman game is ongoing, according to this oh. third quarter still. It hadn't reported lately, though. Be a long game. You're right. Here's the Bears are running with the ball. Mitchell makes a move, cuts the corner, and tripped up from behind. Nice open field tackle. Tripping up the receiver is Sean Hill. Gets Mitchell down, way shy the first down. Pickup of about one. Otherwise, it had a first down run. It's going to bring up third and seven. And that Pembroke defense doesn't look like right now a, a team that's given up 317 points this year already. They've given up 317 points. They, they're inspired right now because they know they can play with the Bears. They've proven that to themselves, and that's what's most important. doesn't matter what other people think. It matters what you think and your players around you think. Third and eight. Big series for LR. Balls in the right hash going towards the closed end. Back to pass. Willingham. Time across the middle. Caught. First down. 30-yard line. Helmet comes off, but that is Hampton with a nice catch. Demarius Hampton, the junior out of Union Pines, hauls in the pass. And the Bears get a custom design group first down. That was a fine throw and a fine catch. A big square in from the backside. Good job by the offensive line. They gave Grayson plenty of time to throw the football. That's a route that they hit just a minute ago to set up their uh, scoring drive was that square in across the middle. Ball's on the right hash. Two receivers left. They hand it Stevens right. Gets a good block. Cuts the corner. 25 inside the 25. Ridden down at about the 24. Means Stevens. The fullback picks up six. Second and four. 441 to go in the third. Bears marching here trying to tie it. Trailing by seven. And the, the importance of every possession becomes obvious now because they've scored on their first two and taken the lead. So every possession now, that clock's running, and you're getting closer and closer to the end of the game, end of the quarter. Play action, Willingham. They'll look to the end zone. Man is wide open. Caught. Touchdown. Boy, nice play action pass in the corner. That's Derek Young, and he'll get the touchdown. Willingham connects for a second touchdown of the afternoon, and we're almost tied here. It's 31-30. What a nice play on the play action from Willingham to Young. You, get, you run the ball, you run the ball, you run the ball effectively, and then you can run play action when you get down into the red zone inside the 25-30 yard line. Play action passes are great when they know you can run the ball. Seven plays, 56 yards, and we're tied, folks. Bears get on the board again with 4.23 to go here. Moret Stadium, home of the LR Bears. The Bears have tied it 31-31 against Pembroke. We'll step aside. You're listening to LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Bumps and bruises don't always happen when it's convenient. That's what...
NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement exceptional. Maybe you're a great listener or teach kids to read. Perhaps you rescue dogs or own your own bakery. What's unique about you is what we cherish most. With a name like People's Bank, you know we care about people. And we are here to help you achieve exceptional goals. People's Bank. Be exceptional. Member FDIC. <laughs> 1490 WSVM Valdez. 96.5 W243DV FM Valdez. Your hometown station. Grace Willingham connecting on his second touchdown of the day. Veteran Bears quarterbacks, 19 touchdown passes of the season. Connects with Demarius Hampton, who's holding his third of the career. And of the season, the Bears tie it, 31-31, 4.23 to go in the third. We're waiting to kick off, see if the Bears try that pooch kick again that we saw so much over the last couple of games. And here it is, a high kick, running forward at about the 25, running with the ball, running left. He's running backwards, and he gets knocked down inside the 25. Nice play that time by LR. That time, 24, J.P. Palmer. Red shirt freshman out of Townsend, Georgia, McIntosh High School gets the stop, and that's going to force Pembroke back at the 25, first and 10. There's a flag on the play over there on the far sideline. Not sure what it is. You would think it might be against the kick return team, but the, the receiver did that thing we always talk about, Juju. You can't run sideways on a kick return. When you run sideways, you're not gaining yardage. People are gaining on you, and that's exactly what happened. Let's see what the penalty is now. That could change the field position dramatically either way. They could go back into the hole deeper, or the Bears could let them out of the hole, depending on what the play is, what the call is. And they're marching back, and Pembroke is. It's going to be against the Braves. Personal, Personal foul. foul. So one of the players for Pembroke called on a personal foul. That's going to be Alex Altaeus, redshirt freshman out of Moorhead City. So it's going to be back near the 10-yard line at the 12. So first time today we've seen a while that Pembroke has been a field position game and a lot of scoring. They're going to be backed up at their own 12 for the first time today, first and 10. They'll have trips left here near side. Ball's on the far right hash. Quarterback is Jones. Veteran Josh Jones had a good game today. Don't be surprised, though. They will not be afraid to throw the ball down here. They've got a lot of confidence in what they can do. Empty set. They throw it over here to the receiver. He has two blockers, and he's tackled for about a two-yard gain. Bears had him covered up at trips left. They threw it and completed it to McDonald. Redshirt sophomore out of Durham, North Carolina. The Bears tackled him in the open field. Gain of one. Second and nine, just under four minutes to go in the third. Tied at 31. LR ranks seventh in the nation with Pembroke, who came into this game three and six. But off an encouraging game last week, an overtime loss at Newberry. They've lost five in a row at home, or five in a row on the road. Second down, back to pass Jones. Rolling out, throws it incomplete. Threw it into the feet of the running back or wide receiver over there as he was chased out of bounds by Artis. Third down coming now, third and nine. 3.37 to go in the third. A lot of threes. Big play for both teams right here. The Bear defense has not had a stop since way, way early in this game. This would be an unbelievably great time to have that great stop and let the Bear offense get back on the field. Bears have been opportunistic this year. They've had a number of sacks. They've had turnovers, interceptions, had a bunch, two Turn three turnovers a week ago. Jones out of the gun, looking left, back to pass, screen across the middle, tackled in at the line of scrimmage. Good play by Sherrod. Rosser. Is that Rosser? Yep, that's Rosser. Okay. I was going to say Sherrod Williams. Back. Number three, <laughs> yeah. Rosser covering the receiver. Whew. The slot back running across the middle, and Rosser came up and made the stop in the open field. Going to force a punt now as they're 
Braves punter will stand in his own end zone. That was huge, too, because that was an un unbelievable set-up play. They were going to block him over there on the other side, and they just couldn't get to the block because Rosser outran them. This is Parks. High kick. Fair catch called for by Mitchell at the 45. So LR is going to get it near midfield after Isaac Parks, a red shirt junior, averaged 46 yards a punt. That time just from his uh, end zone kicked it to the 48. So here comes the LR offense looking to go ahead. Late stages, third quarter, final three minutes. Bears trailed here in the third. They tied it moments ago on a touchdown pass from Willingham to Hampton. Grayson's had two touchdown passes today. Probably up near 200 yards of passing already. Yeah, the, that last drive, uh, a couple of good passes in there. You know, again, the Bears' ability to come out and run the football on that last drive was key, and I, I don't, I would not expect them to do anything less right here. If we can establish the run, then the play-action pass works better. This is Stevens, the big fullback, takes the give from Willingham, gets it over midfield, down to the 48, and that'll be a pickup of five. Second and five now, biggest, maybe one of the biggest runs of the day for Mean Stevens. And the Bear fullback out of Savannah, back up to the line of scrimmage, Willingham under center. We'll have Mitchell to the right, they'll split out the tight end to the right-hand side. Everybody kind of bunched in, no wide receivers yet. Hampton split to the inside as well. Bears on the short side hash. Sends a man in motion. Stevens again up the middle. Amin gets it inside the 45. Gets a good push down to the 44. Gain of four. Bring up third and one. Amin Stevens back to back runs here. The Bears substitute freely. Starks comes out. Carter comes out. Hampton comes out. They'll send back in a Ramsor tight end. Same formation. Wing T look. Got everybody bunched in the middle. Ball's in the center of the field. And into Pembroke territory at the 43. Under two minutes in the third. Tied at 31. Third and short. Willingham. Hand off Stevens. Gets the first down to the 42. Should be enough for the first down. Let's see the mark is. It's going to be close. Yeah, they're giving it to him. First down. Bears a custom design group first down. So LR gets it after the punt and takes it three plays and gets a first down. Continues the clock under a minute and 40 to go here. LR trying to go ahead, tied at 31. What a great game. Board today, scoreboard final. Virginia Wise gets its first sack win, knocks off Catawba, 21-14. Big upset in the nation. Glenville State beats sixth-ranked Notre Dame College, 23-20. Bears have it out of the gun. Willingham, he'll throw it back to pass. Looking downfield for intended down there and complete looking for a flag. They were trying to go deep to Carter, running a post pattern, covered pretty close over there, incomplete second and 10. As good as Grayson threw the ball in the first half, the second half is not quite as sharp. That ball was thrown and it floated back over the receiver's head, actually came closer to the defensive back. If that ball were more angled in front of him where he could have run into and he may have had a step on him, but the ball was just a little behind him. Bell checks in at fullback. Same formation, they bunch everybody up. Second and 10, man in motion. They'll run option, this is Willingham inside the 40, he'll keep it down to the 38. So the Bear runs an option that time, the Bear junior quarterback picks up six. It's third and four now. When he sees that video, he's gonna wish he'd have pitched it too because if he pitched that ball to Ryan Carter, Ryan Carter had another 10, 12, 15 yards. Nobody was outside on the pitch. Bears look to the sidelines. Again, looks like they'll keep bunch that formation. They'll keep everybody within. Well, no, they'll split them out this time. They reset it. Plenty of time on the play clock, down to 10. Hampton and Carter go left. Mitchell's in the slot. Out of the gun is Willingham. Ball's on the right hash. They'll send a man in motion. They'll run the option left. This is Mitchell. Takes the pitch, cuts the corner, gets the first down. And is yeah, pushed it's back. Be close. I'm not sure he made it. It's going to be real close. Yeah, he he stopped, and as he stopped, the guy ran right into him, and I don't think he made it. It's a half a foot short. Because he, Jaquay, you know, if he cuts back inside, he's going to get drilled. So he kind of stopped and was going to try to avoid the guy, and and he didn't make it. It's it's about a foot, maybe a foot and a half, and this is where the Bears were not really very good down at Limestone, if you remember. Fourth and short, up to the line. Willingham takes the play from the sidelines. He'll go under center. And a timeout. 
timeout. This might be Pembroke. Let's it is. See. It is. Yeah, Pembroke didn't get their – they didn't get their people in the game quickly enough. There's only 14 seconds left to go. But they knew the Bears were getting ready to snap it. The Bears don't worry about how much time there is in the quarter. LR football on the Bears Sports Network, powered by Carolina West Wireless, brought to you all year thanks to the fine sponsors, Cranford Furniture, Dunkin' Donuts, Fanfare, Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company, Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery, home of Bears Talk Live every Tuesday at 7 o'clock where you can get all the latest on Lenore Ryan Athletics from the coaches. A big soccer match tonight, women's soccer team, which won the South Atlantic Conference uh, this past week, ranked eighth in the nation. They start the tournament coming up tonight at 7 o'clock. They'll play Newberry over across the way here on campus. Also, our fine sponsors, Fry Regional Medical Center, People's Bank, Center Street Eats, Southside Power and Fitness, and Custom Design Group. 31-31. Uh, we've played in a close game. You know, Even though last week's game against Wingate was uh, tight, uh, this game, I don't think a lot of people expected when they looked at the records. Though Pembroke, if you dug a little deeper, probably much better than what their record indicated, especially after they took Newberry to overtime last week. And they can score. And they took they, they, they proved they can score. The, and if you can score, you can play. you got a chance. And they've got a lot of those one-on-ones today. That's what's really made it work. Wingett only beat him 48-38. Here's a quarterback keep. Good job right there. And a That's first down on. by Willingham. You only need a yard. You got to you got to run that sneak. Now so, now Willingham lost his headgear. He ripped it off of him. Yeah, I don't know if he gets to stay in the game if they did it. He's got to come out. Yeah. He's got to come out for a play so Gunner Where's Gunner? Well, either Gunner Gunner still got his uh, headset on. Maybe they'll bring well, so Hayden Mann not, in there. No, he's he's got his headset on too, number 7. That's Gunner. So they're waiting for him. The Bears call they're starting time. the clock. They better do something. Coach is, coach is trying to get he's trying to get a clarification. He's going to call timeout. That's the end of the third quarter. End, end of the, the third, third quarter. quarter. He's still going to have to stay out of play, I would guess, even to the end of the quarter. May not. Yeah. We'll see. 31-31 when we come back. Bears have it marching. We'll see if they can go ahead. Your score, Lenore Ryan 31. Kia in Hickory. We want to see you driving a new Kia or hey, a quality pre-owned Kia. We've got a huge selection of new and pre-owned Kias. You got to get to Paramount Kia in Hickory. Highway 70, ParamountKia.com. I knew that there was an opportunity to have my college paid for if I was good enough to play baseball at that level. That was going to make a big difference in my family. D2 Baseball gave me an opportunity to play at a high level and to get an education that's going to be valuable for me throughout the rest of my life. I chose to take my experience of being a student athlete and pursue that within my career and to get a master's degree. If I wouldn't have had a baseball scholarship, there'd be no chance that I'm doing what I'm doing today. Coming back, join us Saturdays and ask for a brewery tour. That's Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery is walking distance from Lenore Rhine's campus at the intersection of Highland Avenue and Lenore Rhine Boulevard in our newly renovated Holler Mill location. Honor the craft with a toast to our bears at Blowing Rock Draft House and Brewery. And go Bears! Back here as we start the fourth quarter. Bears got a first down, fourth and short, quarterback keeper by Grayson Willingham. And he gets the first down, and Bears have it now to 32 of Pembroke. Trying to go ahead here, tied at 31. We mentioned that Pembroke scored a lot of points, Jack, and earlier this year they uh, lost at Winget 48-38. So yeah. you're right, they scored points, but they've given up a bunch. Bears trying to go ahead here. Have it first and ten. You're right, uh, Gunnar Anderson in the quarterback, replacing Willingham, who had to go out because he lost his helmet. Got it knocked off in play. Anderson takes the snap, fumbles the football, flag down everywhere. So procedure call that's going to go against LR, I would yeah. believe. Well, I would refuse it. I would refuse it. They lost. We lose about three yards, almost four yards there. But the snap, the snap and Gunnar were not in sync right there. That, that snap and sync didn't work real good. Well, they took the penalty. I would have refused it. They only gained two yards, and they lost a down. I'd have, I'd have made it. I'd made it second and thirteen. We'll take it though. It gives the Bears an extra down. The really keep Gunner in there. A little bit of surprise there, because that was a that snap right there. The snap and the quarterback weren't in weren't in uh, well, that wasn't sync. A, I, that didn't look good. Yeah. 
that ball popped loose, they could have fallen on us. <laughs> yes, we did too. That's what's scary. Is that considered a play? Yeah. Well, yeah. You can't. Make, no, no, it's not. You can't. You can't make mistakes, but it should be time off. I mean, time off the clock. They don't reset the clock. Well, I guess they did too. Did. Anderson will run an option and he'll pitch it right. This is Carter. He'll get it inside the 30, down to the 27. Ryan Carter picks up about eight. That's now why second Gun down and five. That's why he left Gunner in there. He wanted yeah. to run the option play. And, you know, uh, Grayson's good at the option, but it's not his forte. He can run it, and he can run it enough to make them respect it. But Gunner can run it enough to make you scary respect it. The Jaquay. Bears actually picked up about 10. It's yeah. now second and five. Yeah, Jaquay's back in the game, too. I'll tell you, he's the guy that, you know, he's, he's just been the big play guy for the Bears almost all year. Spread everybody out. Looks like a man-to-man. -man. Play action. Willingham looks downfield underneath. Throughout. This is Mitchell gets the first down. Inside the 20, run out of bounds at the 18. He, he's such a threat. He, he, he gets the ball in his hands uh, running. He gets the ball in it when he catches passes. And last week he had the two big plays, especially the moment at Moretz. And that was outstanding. What a what a come up with that, Juju. Good job. <laughs> Came after a timeout. TV timeout. <laughs> they had extra time to think about it. They called it in the, on the sidelines. Here is Willingham. Rolling left. Dumps it off out of the backfield. Carter inside the 15. Makes a man miss. Gets it inside the 5. And an automatic bear first down. Brought to you by Custom Design Group. Ryan Carter. Showing some strength around the side there and gets it down to the four and a first and goal for the LR Bears. Yeah, the Lenore Rides had, they've really been, you know, pretty good on offense almost all day. We've had a couple of blips here and there, but not many. Stevens, hole, wide open. He'll take it into the end zone. I mean, Stevens scores his 11th touchdown into the land of milk and honey. And with 13.38 to go in the ball game, the Bears go ahead, capping a 53-yard drive and 12 plays. LR leads it now 37-31. Bears, that was just a great drive. The Bears needed that great defensive stand, great drive down the field, take advantage. And again, the Bears do what they have to do on offense. They've thrown the ball well, they've run it effectively, and they're finally back in the lead, but you know, long way to go. Sure is, extra point is good. Take a break. Bears get back on front. Back-to-back -back touchdowns. It's now LR 38, Pembroke 31. You're listening to LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Carolina West Wireless. to a college degree would have been completely different had I not run Division II cross country for the University of Mount Olive. Having an athletic and academic scholarship was key for my success. Our coaches were really helpful with balancing out my academics and athletics. I decided to attend graduate school because I wanted to become an athletic director. Receiving the postgraduate scholarship through the NCAA provided me with the flexibility to choose the school that I wanted. So now I know that I can accomplish any goal that I set for Perhaps you rescue dogs or own your own bakery. What's unique about you is what we cherish most. With a name like People's Bank, you know we care about people. And we're here to help you cover, achieve cover. exceptional goals. People's Bank. Be exceptional. Member FDIC. Back here after the Bears score a touchdown to go ahead. They kick it off, kick it deep, and the return man gets it up to close to 30-yard line to 29. 13-29 to go in the ball game. Bears lead by seven. Cold, winter-like day this afternoon. Sun's been out all day, of course. Lights are on here. Is that right? Are the lights on? Oh, yeah. yeah. Lights are on at Barrett Stadium. It's uh, covered in shade right now. Pembroke has the ball first and 10. Here's a run straight up the middle, stopped at the line of scrimmage, but not before Young is met 
at about the 33, gain of four, second and six now. Pembroke for the first time in a while trailing. They trailed at halftime but went ahead in the third quarter. And now the Bears here in the fourth have scored back-to-back -to -back touchdowns to lead by seven. Yeah, the Bears have been outrushed 142 to 141 through three quarters. They've been outpassed 231 to 181 in uh, the time of possession 27-23 versus 17-37. But the Bears lead on the scoreboard. Made a stop last time. Second and six. Jones back to pass. Plenty of time across the middle. Caught and wrestled down by. There's a flag down late on the far side in front of Pembroke's bench. See what that's about, but not before. The wide receiver coming across the middle is three. He was wrestled down. They're motioning against LR. LR. That's Pembroke motion against us. I, I'm not sure what it is. It, I'm afraid it's something happened late after the play. Let's see if it's unsportsmanlike. Personal foul. So it came again. And yeah, it came against Sherrod Williams on the, the man that made the tackle. Yeah, boy, he's a, he, usually you know when you do it. He was uh, he's standing there with his hands out. He he didn't see that at all. But again, a, a big penalty in a big situation for the Bears. And again. Defensively, we just had we just had that ability today not to be able to make the play when we need. Looked like we had a big play set up a third down and they get it on a on a penalty. Twelve and a half minutes to go in the game. Pembroke now in LR territory at the 49. Thanks for listening, WSVM Radio here this afternoon and all season. The LR Sports Network. First and ten. Jones back to pass. Rolls right. Moves the pocket. Floats Wide down open, field, touchdown. Nope. And caught yep, way deep, 15-yard line. Wide receiver breaking open is McDonald. Sophomore out of Durham beats the Bear coverage down to the 10. Wow, well, I tell you, the Bears just cannot get out of their own way on defense. You know, it looked like we might have them in a third down situation back there. And two, and a, one play later in the penalty, the ball's at the 12-yard line. And that ball just floated up in the air, but he was so far behind everybody. I don't know how he got that deep behind everybody. We must have been in some type of zone coverage because the cornerback looked at the safety when the, he saw the ball was gone. First and 10. Ball's on the right hash. Young in the backfield. Jones now. In the shotgun, they got three receivers out. Flag. Maybe they, in yep, delay a game. Play clock was at zero. 11:47 to go in the ball game. It's going to be a five-yard penalty against the Braves. You know they played about as well Pembroke as you could possibly play against any team, whether it be Lenore Ryan or anybody else. They, they have no turnovers that I remember. They haven't had a fumble and uh, have not had an interception. Uh, their penalty yardage is minimal. Uh, they've been over 50% on third down plays. Uh, you know, they've done about everything you could want to do. You know, they've been in the red zone uh, five times and got four scores, and the one was a miss chip shot field goal uh, right before half. Back to pass Jones, first and 15. Completes it over here in the right flat. Pushed out by Taylor. Not before Carter, Carter gets the reception. Sophomore out of Charlotte, Rocky Taylor. River High School. I think he got the five yards back is what he did on that. That you know they've done they they've done a remarkable job. And again, I know I'm to say it over and over, but I'm so impressed with their game plan. You know they've thrown the ball deep, but they've thrown the ball underneath so much that uh, it's been easy completion. We've got one sack in the ball game. We had some pressures early, but uh, you know the pass rush has just basically not been there, and it's hard to cover if you don't get a pass rush. They'll roll the pocket left. Jones throwing over here, and it's caught shy the first down inside the ten. Upended over there by the Bears. Jackson, Landon again. Scott, Jackson over there. So third down and about five. Yeah, Jackson, uh, Josh Jackson. Uh, or excuse me, not Josh Jackson. I think Josh. Uh, Josh Young's quarterback, he has just really, really manipulated the offense. Uh, he's done what he's had to do. He was on a dead sprint. That was a design play to sprint out. And when the when the linebacker came to force him, he just dumped it to the tight end, who's the guy the linebacker was covering. Third and five. Again, out of the gun. Ball's on the left hash inside the 10. This is a running play. Sheridan running it down close to the five. He's going to be shy the first down. Fourth down coming. Sheridan took it up the middle, but the Bears met him. Good stop by the Bears. I believe that's Williams and Horn. The only thing that, makes you, yeah, the only thing that makes you want to go for it right here, Juju, is 
they 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 got to believe if they when they get the ball, we get the ball back, we'll take it down the field again. Because I would kick field goal right here, thinking I'll get the ball back then. A touchdown wins the game instead of having to worry about it. Fourth down and two. Balls at the five. Inside the five. Jones out of the gun. Three. 84. 84 is the guy. They run it to Jones, the quarterback. Did he make it? They spread him out and ran in the ball. Let's see what the call is. Bears stop him. You knew it was coming sooner or later. I didn't think that time. They had I, five receivers thought, out, and they ran a quarterback keeper. I thought it was a great time to run that because he's a good runner, and he had not run the ball all day off that fake. The only problem was they got anxious. If you know, he didn't sell the fake. You're right. He didn't, he didn't ride that thing in there. He just kind of waved it at him and took off, and the Bears were all over. Give the Bear defense great credit right there. Now the Bear offense has got to step up. You get a chance to see the replay. I believe maybe Horn is in on the stop, he and there Jackson. Were, there were about three guys yeah. on top of him. First and down and ten, Bears have it at their own four. Nine and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Willingham running left in his own end zone. Wow. Dives out to the one. He, that looked like a busted play. It was. We missed the handoff. That, that's the first time I remember that happening in a long, long time. I think that was going to be the little handoff play of the Jets week one. The guy came by him so fast. He just never got the ball in time from the center. And Ronnie Clifton, remember, had to go back and forth between center and tackle. So the Bears really got a struggle right here. Got to get this ball out of here in some degree, at least before you punt it. But, you know, a first down here would be huge. This time, Willingham's going to throw it out of his own end zone. He's got a man wide open. That's Mitchell. Wave him bye-bye. Nobody's going to catch him. To the house. To the house. 99 cotton picking yards. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did that look familiar? That was the same thing that we did last week. Twice. They snuck, they snuck to Quay Mitchell. I'm not even sure where he was. Holy up. Moses. Yeah, it does. 99 yards. Ties the record. Marcus Midget. That's a lot. No, his is the longest run. That broke the record from last week. Yeah. They had the longest scoring pass. Now they've got it. Uh, they've added to it by nine yards. Extra point. Good. <laughs> wow. Do you give uh, Do you give Coach Chronic all the credit in the world for the guts to call that play on your own one yard? I mean, I believe that was the same play. I want to see the replay on it. Yeah, they didn't stop it. So hey, let's yeah. run it again. Well. The that thing is about the same it, play. The, the thing about it, he was in the same position. And I don't know where he lines up or what he does, but every time he does that, it works. Yeah, 99 yards. And it might have been a shade more than 99 yards. Because, you know, when 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 uh, Willingham dove on that busted play, he got the ball out of the end zone, but his body, most of it, was laying in the end zone. I don't think they go any further than 99, so we'll settle for it. <laughs> so the Bears get a huge play. For the first time today, go up two scores. With eight and a half minutes to go. It's LR 45 and Pembroke 31. You're listening to LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. It's Nick and Paramount Automotive, and we're excited to partner up with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and sponsor Lenore Ryan Athletic. Use an established process to create a personalized financial strategy backed by the advice, tools, and resources to help you reach your goals. And 
you'll partner to help your strategy stay on track. Contact Mike today at 828-328-8111. That's 828-328-8111. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Ow! <laughs> Big hit by the Bears after the touchdown on the kickoff. A little scrum out there at about the 15. You know, there's nothing like a 99-yard touchdown pass to get everybody fired up. The stands are still, uh, you know, they're still buzzing, and, and that football team out there, the coverage on that kickoff was amazing right there. They were had so many people down the field so quickly. Chad Crumbly was the man that made the hit that time for the Bears. So Pembroke has it at their own 19. First and 10, trailing by 14 now. Jones out of the shotgun. Bears show blitz. Here they come straight up the middle. They're going to try to fire downfield. He again. Caught. Oh, oh, he drops it. Wide receiver running down the seam. Beat the Bear coverage that time. Looked like double coverage. And he dropped the football. Second and 10. And, I mean, he was open, and the ball was right on the money, and he just flat dropped it. He's made every catch all day, and that was the easiest one he had. But it's just its just unbelievable. The Bears just keep letting people get wide open. I mean, we're in zone coverage. Guy was running with him, but he just ran by him. Not good. Uh, safety Eric Jackson just limped off the field. Bears already hurt in the secondary. Sent another man in there, second and 10. Showing blitz again. They do. Send six right up the middle, across the middle, caught. Breaks a tackle and then spun down, making the Tyson stop Carter. that time on the. Tackle by Marcus Rosser. Carter was on the reception. Marcus Rosser made the tackle, not before first down. They'll move the chains up to the 33. Braves have it, trailing 8.15 to go in the game, trailing by two touchdowns. Have a fresh set of downs. They'll set it up at the right hash mark. Their offensive line deserves a lot of credit, too. They've done a great job today of protecting. We have not been able to get people around and get open. And quarterback will scramble out of there and he'll throw it out of bounds. Caught by one of the Bears on the sidelines and complete second and 10. Stops the clock right at eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Artis is in there, defensive end, along with Luba and Houston. Robinson in. All the Bears starters are back in there. It's pretty much the starting offense. But the Bears just have not been able to generate pass rush. And the secondary is, you know, has played the zone back there and the uh, They've thrown it underneath, but what's scary is they've gotten behind us too many times. Second and 10. Jones back. Artis under pressure, throwing it over here. Caught out of bounds. Just Jones pass caught by number eight. Completed to the 39. Gain of six, bringing up a third and four. Again, the outcut. That was my man. He was back in there, number 84, Sean Brown. He's 185 pounds. He looks like uh, he's 6'3". He's he, he very slender and thin, but, boy, he catches the football well except for that one. But, you know, he runs good routes. He's a good route runner, and he catches the ball. That's what you want in a receiver. They're going to have a timeout. Not sure what the deal is. Waiting on the play clock. Timeout, Pembroke. You mentioned about the receiver out of Marvin Ridge High School, Waxaw, North Carolina. Let's give an update, a couple of scoring updates for you on the Blowing Rock Brewery scoreboard. Came into today, 12 teams in the Division II ranks were undefeated. One went down we know of, that is sixth-ranked Notre Dame College. Lost to Glenville State, 23-20 today. It was Carson Newman, 24, Limestone, 20. Is that a final? No, <laughs> here's the final. Carson <laughs> Newman, 42, Limestone, 35. He just popped up. 42-35, what a unbelievable. Wise gets its first conference win. They knock off the top of 21-14. Tusculum was leading Mars Hill 10-7. Ferris State ranked second leading Grand Valley 14-9. And Virginia Union trailing Virginia State 14-3 in the CIAA championship there this afternoon. Third down and four, back to action. Seven and a half to go in the ball game. They're gonna add some more time on the clock. No timeout. Somebody called timeout. They stopped it well, for a minute. Coach, the coach. All right, here we go. Four receivers out. Out of the gun is Jones. Balls at the left hash. Singling for the snap. Gets it. Backs up to his 30. Under pressure. Goes down. 
Bears head coverage and the sack on the play. I believe that's Luba, the whole front four. Yeah, Houston, Houston. Houston may have been the first one there, I'm not sure. That whole front Houston, four. Yeah, Houston, Luba, everybody was there. Big play. Robinson, the freshman, made a stop as well. So the Bears, that was a more of a coverage sack that time, guys. The secondary did its job and a force a punt now as the punter backs up to his own 15. This is Parks with Mitchell standing at his own 31. Six and a half to go here. Bears leading 45-31. Parks gets it away. High kick. Mitchell calls for the fair catch at his own 26. So Jaquay Mitchell, who last week caught a couple of passes, both for touchdowns, I think caught three on the afternoon, two of them for scores. Today hauled in a 99-yard pass a moment ago with the Bears in front, 45-31. I'm guessing with the great job these guys do that we're on the stream, this, that play will probably pop up on maybe Division II plays of the week. Oh, it's I'm just guessing as I look over in the window over there, guys. Probably, right? They got yeah. They they have the uh, the two longest scoring passes in, in LR the history, history of LR football in back to back weeks. How about that? First and ten now for the Bears and Willingham's got three touchdown passes this afternoon, up to twenty now for the season. This time they keep it on the ground. This is Stevens running right. They could use about. How about a six-minute drive here? Oh, yeah. The, well, the Bears, this game the Bears are capable of doing that, but, you know, hey, Coach Chronic, well, he may surprise everybody and throw the ball on, on second down here and, and score again or something. Hey, he's, got all kinds of, he's got all kinds of options going on now. So when Willingham, Willingham has been throwing the ball so well, and, again, that ball was perfectly thrown because the worst thing you see is a quarterback is some guy running wide open down the field and you throw a bad ball to it. He put that ball on the money. That was a great throw by Grayson. And I don't know what that route is, but three times in, in, in two games it's worked perfect. They have a special name for it. Bears dropped the football on the jet sweep. Mitchell dropped it. He covered his own fumble, gained a one on the play, 39, 38. Yeah, the Bears, the Bears didn't need that because that play was that was a yard gainer. That that play was gaining yardage. I believe Grayson's up close to 300 yards in the air this afternoon. Maybe close yeah, to well, a career that, high. That, yeah, that that 99 yarder helped a lot. That 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 was one one third of, or, or half of what we had going in. Third and eight now. Big down right here. Look at look at Pembroke. They got everybody within five yards of the line. That well, I take it back. The safety is at six yards. No crossing route, maybe. Send Mitchell in motion. Hand it up the middle to the fullback Stevens. He pushes forward up to about the 34, shy of the first. It's going to force a punt now. Down to five minutes to go in the ball game. Bears leading by 14. That was a two touchdown call. If you're up one touchdown, I would have expected something different. Two touchdowns, I, that call not, didn't surprise me. That was a trap inside. You know, Jefferson's in there at center now. Yeah, he's 54? been the last couple of series, yeah. Yeah. Is Ronnie Clifton out, or does he move over to tackle? He's at left tackle right now. And Curtis Feeney has checked in. He's been, he started today at left guard. Uh, Jordan Brooks was in there for a while. Blake Jefferson back at center. Jason Poe, right guard. Ian Brinson at right tackle. Bears are going to punt it now. Michael Owen set to kick it, standing at his own 20. Gets it away. Nice kick. Drives the return, man. Got to the cover. Got to cover if he gets outside over it. And Bears have him hemmed in, pushed Boy, him out of bounds great at the job. 25. That's a great job. Let me get that young man's number because that's one heck of a play right there. Miles Jackson. Nope, that's not him. It, right here. Right here with his head hanging out. 50. What is it? 20. 20, Cal Dickey. That's Cal Dickey. What a great play. He 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 maintained, he got blocked, but he maintained his outside shoulder Put free, and he forced the ball carrier into the sideline and then made the tackle. Bears got need to play defense now. Don't want to give up a quick, easy score here and make, this, uh, make you have to sweat. Four minutes to go in the game. Back to pass. Jones. Completes it over on the far side, shy of the That's first. Gain of seven. Steps out of bounds at the 35. 405 to go in the game. Bears have been challenged today. They trailed here in the second half and rallied with a couple of back-to-back -back scores. They tied it and then went ahead 45-31.
Jones again, short drop, dumps it out of the backfield, close to the sticks over there. Threet with a reception, Milliken on the stop. First down, Braves. Again, uh, this UNC Pembroke, this has been a series that started four years ago. Part of the South Atlantic Conference Scheduling Alliance. They are leaving the league, or that alliance this year, and they're going up to the mountain. Here's a sack on the play, and a fumble. Ball's on the ground. They got it back. As I was going to say, Pembroke leaving the conference, but they're going. This time they try to run a pass. The Bears had all kind of pressure, they forced the ball down, and somebody tried forcefully to pick, they yeah. recovered the ball. Somebody tried to pick it up, and, and if he'd fallen on it, I think we'd have had it. That's Houston coming out right there. That, no, that's Luba. Yeah, if he had, uh, if, if whoever that was couldn't see the number, had he fallen on the ball, the Bears would have it, but he didn't fall on it. He tried to pick it up. First and ten. Get up, get up, get Here's up, get up, get up. Pass in the flat. Get up. To Sheridan, and he's going to pick up yardage. Way shy the first. It was second and 28. That's a good Now it's going to bring up third and 20. That gained about 15 yards right there. Just a little dumb. But, you know, you've got to get it down to manageable because I, I would think they're in four down territory. They would go for it here because they've got, uh, they've only got two timeouts left to use one. So they can only stop the clock a couple of times. The Bears could run it out. So they about have to go for it if they don't make it. Third and 20. This needs to be about a 15-yarder. Under pressure. Quarterback slips out, scrambling, looking right. Throws it. Incomplete. Out of bounds. Brings up fourth down. Jones took a hit from Houston after he let it go. And then Houston helped him up. That's yes, he did. Good job, Amari. That's really good. That, that sportsmanship like that is hard to come by nowadays. You don't see enough of it. Hey, they're, they know what that guy's done. They've been chasing him all day, you know. They got to go for it. Yeah, fourth down and long. If he could have picked up about 10 or 12, that would have been the key there. Then it would have been manageable here. You just about have to throw the ball 30 yards down the field. I don't think his catch and run is going to work. Fourth and 20. Jones back to pass, throwing it high. Caught first, first down. First down. Got One of two bear defenders. That's my man right there, Sean Brown. He made them all. J.P. Palmer and Dante Young were on the coverage. And a first down for the Braves, uh, the Braves at the 49 of LR. Boy, I tell you what, this young man has had quite the football game. Sean Brown and the quarterback, Josh Jones. Name to remember. Keep up with him down the line. What's that? LR recruit. Fourth at one time. They're going deep. Here we go. Cover, deep cover, pass. cover. Caught it. He caught it, buddy. I'll tell you what, that's unbelievable. They they just they have made some of the finest throws and catches. That's unbelievable. He just threw it to his back shoulder and the kid just let him run by and he caught it. He stopped and fell with both feet in bounds and caught it falling out of bounds. What a catch. So on fourth and twenty they convert and now catch it about a thirty yard reception and it's inside the twenty. Clock under 154 to go in the game. Bears get some pressure. They throw it in the end zone incomplete. As they hit Jones, the quarterback, as he let go of the football. Second and 10 now. 150 to go in the game. Bears leading by 14. If you Offensive can, shootout today. If you can get your receivers in one-on-one -on -one situations, and that's what they've done, they've reduced the game to a one-on-one -on -one situation you know, quite a bit today, and they won most of those battles, and you got to give them a lot of credit. Their game plan coming in has been really well conceived, and they've done a good job executing it. Back to pass again. Jones, the quarterback, completes it down close to the 10, threw it low, and picked That's up the reception. McDonald. That's McDonald. Coverage by and their Morgan. receivers, Juju, they, they, you know that. You were a receiver. Their receivers have caught the ball. They've uh, got everything. You know, no matter where Except the balls that. were thrown, they were high, low, inside, outside. If it, they they got their bodies in position to make the catch. Keep it right here. Timeout on the field. They got a minute one. and a half to go left, and uh, Bears leading by 14. One timeout left for Pembroke. The Braves again going into the conference up in the West Virginia, Ohio area, the Mountain East Conference next year basically replacing Virginia Wise, who came into the South Atlantic Conference this year. Well, this is going to be an interesting, you know, week coming up for the Bears because they got to get ready to go down and play Catawba, and Catawba's just had a very difficult season. And, and 
you know, almost everything they've done has backfired. They've had a lot of injuries, I understand. And it's just a tough, tough time for Catawba right now. So it's one of those games, they got nothing to lose. We could see anything. I remember in 1966, we went down here in a similar situation. They came out and spread the field, put Lyman on one side, spread out, called it the Bear Gun, and wound up beating us. We were a better football team. Third down. Third and three. A lot of the fans still with us. They're bundled up today. Cold afternoon here in Hickory at LR. They run a play action, rolling left. Sheridan out of the backfield. Hit, drop, way shy of the first down. That was a play by Jabbar Smith and I believe Joseph and Miles. Oh no, that's Jaquan Artis. So bring up another timeout and a fourth down coming. Sometimes when you have a play that's it's it's a, a play designed on deceit. They ran a motion, ran him back, faked to him, rolled one way, and then tried to go back. And all that took too much time. And while all that was going on, we were just playing pass defense. That's a play that would be better on first down or early in the game, not in a crucial situation. But it wasn't going to fool the Bears, but we were sitting back playing defense and looking for the pass. So Grayson Willingham today's had a great game with three touchdown passes close to probably career high in yardage. And the Bear defense has certainly been tested today, and they've got some injuries over there. Miles Jackson, or not, Eric Jackson walking around. Looks like he is limping on his left leg. We've seen uh, some others, one of the starters for the Bears this afternoon, Quentin Hayes, defensive end, out. No timeouts left, by the way, for Pembroke. So the Bear defense being tested here, trying to hold them out of the end zone again. Down at the 11. Here's the ball game again. Fourth down. Got to get to the about the seven and a half yard line. And you want to make a play right here because you don't want to go to an onside kick. That's the last thing we want to see is a touchdown and an onside kick. Timeout LR. We'll keep it right here. One more scoring update for you. Virginia State and Virginia Union. 14-3 in favor of Virginia State. Over that, game, that game's showing at halftime, Juju, and I can't get an update. Florida Florida Tech and North Greenville's 14-14 in the fourth quarter, but they started at 1-30. That okay. game has not updated either one either. Valdosta playing West Florida tonight. Valdosta State, number one of the nation. West Florida's 20th in the nation. And that is their tough road game. And then before that, they come back and host uh, West Georgia next week. Valdosta does. They've won 23 straight regular season games, longest in the uh, nation. Bears have won 18 in a row. 24-17 now. Virginia Union has come back to lead in that game. It's in the fourth quarter, 24-17. They were down 14-3. I believe Virginia Union was favored in that game. They're a number seven seed in the region. And if they continue to win, that gives the Bears, if they win here this afternoon, that helps their strength of schedule, having already beaten teams that are already ranked in the region. Here we go, fourth down. Here's the ball game, minute 26, fourth and three. Pembroke will send out three receivers, a running back standing next to the quarterback who's in the gun, looks right, throws it in the end zone, falls in the air, and it is caught. He got it out of bounds. He caught it out of bounds. It hit one of our players right in the chest. One of our players almost intercepted it. It hit, him, hit the guy behind him in the chest, bounced up into the end zone, and they almost caught it. J.P. Palmer. unbelievable. J.P. Palmer hit him right in the chest. He couldn't get his feet down. The receiver, the receiver to back of the end zone caught the ball, but he couldn't get his feet down. So the last couple of series for Pembroke, they get down close. They march at 70, 80 yards, and Bears turn it over on downs for the second time, and now they're going to line up in a victory formation. Pembroke out of timeouts, and LR is going to extend its winning streak. But this was this was a nail-biter for sure. Bears are going to win. 45-31. Nobody will know how close this ball game was. If you weren't here to or, or listen to us or, or watch the streaming or – or we're here at the game, nobody will know how close and how tough this ball game was. And give Pembroke a lot of credit. Give the Bears a great deal of credit. The defense was struggled all day long. Finally got some stops late in the game, and the Bear offense just never relented. The Bear offense was just all day long. It was offense, offense, offense down the field, score, score, score. 
This was the same team the Bears beat last year, 51-3. So they have definitely improved on their season. That's a ball game. Yes, it is. Bears win their 20th consecutive regular season win. And the 12th in a row, I believe, or 13th in a row at Moret Stadium. Your final score, Lenore Ryan knocks off Pembroke State this afternoon. It's the Bears 45 and UNCP 31. Back with our postgame show. Stay with us. You've been listening to LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. It's Nick at Paramount Automotive, and we're proud to sponsor Lenore Ryan Football. Go Bears! Come see us on Highway 70. We've got a huge inventory of new Volkswagens, Volvos, Porsches, Hyundais, and Kias. Plus, did you know we sell tires, and we'll be any competitor's price on tires every day. If you're thinking about selling your car, we'll buy your car, truck, or SUV, even if you don't buy a car from us. So during those timeouts, check our inventory at ParamountAuto.com and score a touchdown at Paramount Automotive. Boy, that was a hard hit. When the Bears get banged up, they go to Richard Williams, official team chiropractor for the LR Bears. And he's the best choice for your family, too. Whether it's dealing with sports injuries, headaches, body pain, jaw disorders, carpal tunnel, and much more, Dr. Williams will individualize a program to meet your specific needs. So if anybody in your family needs chiropractic care, choose the best. Choose the man the LR Bears trust, Dr. Richard Williams in Hickory. More at richardwilliamschiropractic.com. At People's Bank, we believe what makes you different makes you exceptional. Maybe you're a great listener or teach kids to read. Perhaps you rescue dogs or own your own bakery. What's unique about you is what we cherish most. With a name like People's Bank, you know we care about people. And we're here to help you achieve exceptional goals. People's Bank. Be exceptional. Member FDIC. Quality work that's on time and within budget. Sound too good to be true? Well, it is true with David E. Looper and Company, a general contracting company that has a diverse range of building experience, including medical office complexes, retail shopping centers, educational facilities, as well as design build projects. They take pride in the quality of their work that's completed on time and within budget. For your future building needs, contact David E. Looper and Company, licensed in multiple states, fully insured and bonded. David E. Looper and Company, a proud sponsor of the LRB. For over 50 years, Cranford Furniture at 1700 East Main Street in Valdez has been serving the residents of Valdez and surrounding areas. Whether you're looking for bedroom furniture or living room furniture, Cranford Furniture has you covered. They're friendly, they're honest, and they're local. Small, medium, large recliners, beds, dressers, and if they don't have it, they can order it for you. Give the crew at Cranford Furniture a try. Located between exits 112 and 113 off I-40 on Highway 70, east of Aldi's. Cranford Furniture, serving the area for 50 years with the finest in furniture. Head coach Drew Cronick talking with the Bears down on the field right now following their 45-31 win this afternoon over UNC Pembroke. The Braves give the Bears all kind of fits this afternoon, but LR prevails to improve to 10-0 on the season. And we saw in a couple of national scores today some close ball games, and for this one, definitely very close. The Bears trail in the second half for the first time all year, but rallied Jack when they had to, and I probably the the depth and the able to make the big plays when the game was on the line helped Lenore Ryan win this game today. The last three weeks, Juju, the the limestone game, the Wingate game, and this game have all been games that went into the fourth quarter with the game in doubt. And and that's something the Bears really, through the first six games, or seven games, I guess, with 10-0 now, the, that, the first seven, seven weeks of the season hadn't really happened. You know, the Bears had won uh, pretty convincingly because they got off to such great starts and, you know, just were able to, you know, take the first – uh, quarter and just con- continue to roll throughout the rest of the game. And uh, th- these three games probably, you know, although it's a little tougher on the coaches and the players and, and the fans and everybody than the blowouts, these games give you a lot of confidence moving down the line in the playoffs or whenever it may be that we get into close ball games. We'll have had a little bit of success to fall back on and say, well, we did this and we did this. Because defense today was really tested. Came out, start third quarter, and gave up two quick touchdowns, and all of a sudden we're behind in the third quarter, and that hadn't happened. 
It sure was, and uh, the offense, when it had to happen, it counted in the second half. Again, the Bears trailed in the second half after uh, Sean Brown, 33-yard pass from quarterback Josh Jones, and then Josh Sheridan had an 8-yard run. And late in the third quarter, midway through the third quarter, the Bears trailed 31-24. LR tied it with about four and a half minutes to go in the third on a Dariq Young, 23-yard touchdown pass from Grayson Willingham. And then in the fourth quarter, the Bears uh, assumed control of the football game. Amin Stevens with a four-yard run, his 11th score of the season, gave the Bears a 38-31 lead. And then with about eight and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Quay Mitchell took a 99-yard pass from Grayson Willingham and took it the distance. Second week in a row that he's hit the big play. They have a name for that play, and Coach Chronic told me the other night on Bears Talk Live, and I forgot what it was, but I'll go back and look it up because he said they, the players called for that play last week when they had the ball down at the 10-yard line. He said, what do you think we ought to run? And he gave the players the option to do that. They must have did it again today because well, they ran it back-to-back times. They had a – a uh, little bit of a foul up on that first play. They nearly got a safety, and then they backed it up again and threw it 99 yards. And Mitchell, you couldn't have been any more open. It was oh, like no. there was, there was, there was nobody, nobody out there. It was like, would, I mean, it was like there was, in practice. Yeah. And there was nobody within 40 yards of him. And, and now one thing they did do, they did stack the line of scrimmage all day long. They played up close. We saw one time when the safety was six yards deep, and he was the deepest man. They, were, they did stack the line of scrimmage against the run and were susceptible to play pass. But – when you do it off the one-yard line, Dude. it takes great execution, and, and it takes a lot of confidence by your head coach and your play caller in that team that he's got that he's going to uh, give them the opportunity to, to run a play pass off the one-yard line. And, we, you know, just outstanding because the Bears outgained, were outgained 502 yards to 458. They ran 78 plays. We ran 53. They had the ball 36 minutes. We had it 22. They they did now one thing they did trail off on they were doing very good job on third downs but by the end of the game on third downs they were six of fifteen so in the fourth quarter and late third quarter the Bears defense stepped up the Bears were only two of six but we didn't get a lot of third downs because we moved the ball down the field so quickly and we were four of four on red zone scores and they were four of seven and the field goal right before the half and then at the end of the game that was another one where they had the ball opportunity to score and didn't get it in there. Josh Jones, a remarkable game, 34-46, 382 yards and two touchdowns. He was sacked three times. Willingham, 12 of 16, very efficient, 303 yards, three touchdowns, was sacked one time, and, of course, the 99-yarder. And uh, that was one of three touchdown passes. So I think he's going to be my choice for player of the game. Yeah, I'd I'd agree 100%. (laughs) Um, we'll take a time out, come back, and uh, kind of wrap things up, name our player of the game, look ahead to next week, and uh, give you some final thoughts. Stay with us. Bears win today 45-31 as they knock off UNC Pembroke today. Good game on the defensive side as well for some LR players. We'll come back and talk about it. Stay with us. This is the Bears post game brought to you by Mike Johnson, Hickory Toyota. Before you buy, give Mike a try. That's 1-800-NEW-TOYOTA. Mike Johnson, Hickory Toyota. Sponsors our post-game show. Stay with us. This is LR Football powered by. So, AB's going to have to be up here because he's Oops, switching. Sorry. AB's switching? He's on the switcher. Okay. Is still me and AB? Yep. Okay. But so he's doing, he's doing back. Okay. So, Adi, you're going to be basically standing back, and AB's going to sit in front, and hopefully you two are going to be talking to each other. That's
Testing, testing, one, one check, two, three. Check, check, one, two, check, check. AB. Check, Man. check, hello. Hello. Boom, hello, check, check, mic check, one, two. Test, one, two, three, one, two, three, test, test. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. You're not going to be able to hear yourself. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I'm moving out of the way. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Barrett's Sports Complex as we have a good one here tonight. It's the quarterfinal of your SAC tournament for women's soccer. It's the visiting Newberry Wolves and your LR Bears. Should be a good one, A.B., um, here on Bear Sports Network on the SAC Live. I'm Ada Kaliande, joined by my broadcast partner, A.B., AB, what do you want to see in this game? And could you give us the starters as well when you get them? All right, so we got LR starters for this game. They're going to have Van Eerden up front, Maddie Kyle, Nev Dustin, and Axel Mushtop in the middle, Abby McGarrow and Amanda McFarlane, as well as Rhea Acton, um, Olivia Thomas, Alyssa Cruz, and Christina Shumshock. And in goal, Christina Warner. So for the Bears, um, while we wait on the Wolves to give us their starting 11, I just expect this one to be up pace for them. Try to take advantage and jump on this team early. Exactly, ABA. Just look, pulling up some stats on both squads. LR is 26-2 and all-time against Newberry. Their last win was this season, 5-0 over Newberry. And, you know... They're looking to remain unbeaten here at home and, uh, and move to 11-0. And this has been the most wins under a Coach Higgins campaign since he's been the head coach at LR, 14 and counting on the season for LR. And for Newberry, they have some studs on their team as well. Daphne Hiyami with 10 goals and 5 assists on the season for 25 points. Should be putting in an all-conference nod herself. Um, Jacqueline Aldrich, 
four goals and seven assists for 15 points. So those two, you look for them throughout this game for Newberry to really get their offense going. They're um, very good and able to read breaks and read the spaces, those two. And then on top of that, their keeper, Jalen Gant, an 875 save percentage. I specifically remember they had a different keeper in at the beginning of the game when they played LR earlier in the season. They brought Gant in and she really was very impressive, very audible as a keeper. You could hear her from up here and she seemed like she had a very good command of the defense. So look for her to get things going in the back and goal. Should be a good one. It's a it's a nice it's a nice refreshing 38 degrees. Oh, it's it's lovely right now. I <laughs> um this should be this should be an interesting one. I I don't think it'll be a lot like the last matchup between these two teams where it was 4 to nothing and LR did jump all over the Wolves, but it, you'll see when you know playoff time always makes things a little interesting. Yeah, I'm looking for the spark plugs off LR's bench. Um, I'm looking for Ali Zuger to come in hot and just really trying to amp up this team. I mean, LR, we've watched them all season. They're a very energetic team, and they play with a lot of high-energy players. So look, look, look for them to get going. And, I mean, this Newberry team as well, can't sleep on them. They're here for a reason. Um, they're looking to play upset here today. They're looking to play upset, and nothing's more dangerous than a team that has nothing to lose. And that's exactly what the Wolves are playing tonight. If they lose, then the Bears were supposed to beat them, and they were the best team over the regular season and all this and that. But the Wolves can find a way to win this game. It just means a lot more to them. So they're going to come out, and I expect them to play determined. Yeah, it should be a great one. We have about six minutes remaining until we begin this one. All right, bold predictions. A.B., this is, this is the part where we do it. What do you want to see? From um, I think the bold prediction side of it, um, both teams get on the board, but the game winner will come in the final 30 minutes of the game. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a shootout. Uh, I've seen this new Mary team. They definitely created a lot of shots and opportunities in the last game, just weren't able to capitalize. But, um, but I think today it's going to be a different story. I think it's going to be a shootout. I think... LR comes out on top, but I think they come out 4-3. Yeah, I, I think this does have the potential to get get up there and run in. Um, I'm interested to see. We talked about how it's 38 degrees. It's a 7 o'clock game. Normally they play earlier in the day on the weekends. So I want to see if that has any effect on uh, the ladies as they run around and just if they're, they come out cold. <laughs> exactly. You got to – when it's this kind of weather, you got to battle the adversity. You have to stay warm, no pun intended. You have to just really get going. You have to get going from the get-go. Because if you if you remain stiff and not ready to play, you're going to get taken out easily. Now I got the starters here for the Wolves. And in goal is Jalen Gant. You have Emma Harms, Samantha Molina, Taylor Hyatt, Courtney Velasquez, Velasquez, excuse me, Jacqueline Aldrit, Sierra Chavez, Daphne Hayami, Monica Jimenez, Taylor Monahan, and Sally Slice. So just getting ready here. Is they're about to get the starters out here, and we'll be rolling here in a little under five minutes left.
We're back here re getting ready to go. Should be a great one. Both sides are pumped up. I'm amped up. AB's amped up. We're trying to stay warm. Let's get rolling. Let's get it started. Let's just go. Get 90 minutes of some great soccer in today. There's nothing like playoff soccer. Especially with this conference, we've seen all year just great plays, great players, and teams just all around. So excited to see what these two have here in store for us today. So we're about to begin. You see the majority of LR's players electing to wear some gloves. You know, trying to keep your hands warm. Yeah, I see a decent amount of gloves, long sleeves. It's that kind of night. Stay warm. Both teams trying to score some goals and advance to the next round. One of the things I think we got to watch in this game is the effect that the home field will have for the Bears. It's a team that won a lot of games at home. They ride behind their crowd. And for the Wolves, being on the road, can they get a big win and kind of silence this crowd? I think the key will be for them is trying to get on the board early and just putting the pressure on the Bears. That's very true. I mean, the BSC is, has been known, has been rowdy all season long. And, I mean, it's freezing out here, but – People are still coming out to support their their LR Bears team. And, I mean, to watch some great soccer, I'm excited to see what Newberry has in store for us, what LR has in store for us. So we're just waiting on the, the teams to break their huddles, and we're going to get rolling. Should have a fun one today. I'm ready for it. Exactly. Looks like LR is going to start off with the ball. It'll be Moose Talk in the middle. And Moose Talk will get it started. And Moose Talk is off. And she's already weaving in and out. Good defense right there by the Wolves. That's one of the going to be, as I, excuse me, that's going to be one of the, the game keeps for the Wolves to get the ball away from Axel Mushtak. And I'm sure they've watched film on her all season. And Mushtak, her and Dustin, they make everything go for this Bears team up the middle. Bears in the box, and that's going to be a penalty.